the studio was still unsure if they were going to go with unknowns or if they were going to do names, particularly for that role, because it was kind of the like main dude. And ultimately, I found out the guy was Jonathan Taylor Thomas that they were hoping to get. And he ultimately passed, I believe, because... And I haven't talked to him about this. I'd love to get his side of the story. But my version of it and my... Hold that thought. Guys, bring him in. <clears throat> wow. They were supposed to bring in a JTT John- lookalike. I'm sorry. And he was going to do a whole thing. A whole us. bit. Yeah. Be- I'm, sorry. yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have the budget for extras. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the About Last Night podcast. Doozy of an episode today. Jason Biggs, the star of American Pie, American Reunion, American Wedding, American Pie 2, uh, Orange is the New Black, Saving Silverman, one of my favorite movies of all time. Banger episode. So good. We actually met over Instagram. He started following me. I hit him up, said I was a big fan. Uh, he was like, when you're in New York next, yeah, I'll do the pod. I was like, I'm actually going to be there next week. Is this too early? Am I a psycho ex-girlfriend? And uh, he said yes And uh, to the psycho ex-girlfriend part. And then yes to the pod. And here we are. It's a great almost two-hour conversation. Uh, he, he was a childhood actor. His um, his his sacrifices from the family as he entered into the biz, his early acting days, the casting and process and experience of American Pie, he breaks down thoroughly, and it's phenomenal. So many laughs, so many crazy, fortunate uh, moments of, of luck and hard work that go his way, and uh, and it's really cool to hear an in-depth breakdown of that whole time and chapter because it's uh, you know kind of a staple in the film and comedy world for so many of us. Um, so enjoy the hell out of this episode. Follow Jason on Instagram at Biggs Jason. Follow me at Adam Ray Comedy, the podcast at ALN Podcast. Tour dates 2023, all stacking up. Uh, coming up, we've got, oh baby, December 11th, Snoqualmie Casino, just east of Seattle. Come out, tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. That's December 11th. December 22nd and 23rd at Helium Comedy Club in Portland, Oregon. And then, of course, December 29th through the 31st, Vegas, Tropicana for New Year's. Come out and giggle and laugh your ass off until you poop your pants. Uh, Tons of cities uh, on the deck for 2023. Uh, Chicago, San Diego, West Palm Beach, Richmond, Virginia, Portland, Oregon again, Seattle again, uh, Dallas, Fort Lauderdale, Baltimore, All those tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. Of course, Young Rock every Friday on NBC. Welcome to Chippendales has dropped on Hulu the first two episodes. The next two episodes drop tomorrow. Merch at AdamRayComedy.com. Tour dates and tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. So now with all the bullshit out of the way, happy belated Thanksgiving. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast with the one and only Jason Biggs. Hey, it's Herbert. Guys, welcome back to the show. Man, could not be more fired up to be in New York City um, because uh, because I miss the smell of pee. No, and you know what? I hate when people say that because New York has a distinct smell, but like a good, you know, hustle and bustle. There's a lot of people. There's a, The more people, the more experiences, the more sights, the more sounds. The more smells. Who you said hate, that? You hate it here. <laughs> you fucking hate it here. Don't shit. Don't don't ask me to be on your fucking podcast and then shit on my town, dude. No, I. Like, I. Uh, speaking I, of smells like Pete, my first guest. Oh, sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> you could have been a news guy. Dude, Was that ever a dude? Hold on, hold on, please. Your uh, your um <laughs> your, your mall bits that oh. you do with the TV show yeah. trailers is you. I literally after hearing a couple of them, I was like. I wonder if he actually does do the real ones on TV. Like I was like, I was fooled. I was like, this sounds per- like the, the timing is perfect. <laughs> yeah, and it, you have a great voice. Oh, so I was thanks, like, oh, man. maybe it. Re- maybe does he actually do the real ones? <laughs> I. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the way he delivered Balenciaga made me feel like he could also <laughs> deliver Outmatched on Fox. Oh God! Um, Someone did their research. I like it. Oh, I watched it. Big fan. Let thanks, me just man. say. 
So we met through IG, and I should say I accosted you through IG. I saw that you started following me. Yeah. And this is what I think social media, and I want to hear your take on it. For me as a stand-up, necessary, uh, wasn't a big fan when it started to become a true, like, necessity, where it was like, you got to – I always was, like, you know, making videos and stuff like that. So even when Vine came out, it was like – it did feel a little daunting because it was like, oof, I was just getting going with YouTube stuff, and And I was doing two- to four-minute sketches, and now everyone's like, ah, dude, we don't want (laughs) to – hey, man, six seconds tops, and then we're out. Yep. So I was, like, trying to adjust to that. And then just the the act of posting thing I just struggled with. And then I was just like, fuck, man, I got to, like, find things that at least I like to do that uh, – like the mall thing that at least make it not feel like work. But also just – I don't know. And then – and being like, even if it's – but it, it also looked, is work because you are putting totally. You are total. You are going put, to the mall. <laughs> yeah, for that purpose. Exactly. Just sad. Yeah. Well, but I a mall is great. I just. It is. I'm from Jersey. I. I a mall you is. Appreciate a good. Oh, mall. I love a good mall. Did you grow up near where they shot mall rats? No. So Kevin is further south of me. Gotcha. But um, he's he's clo- He's in Red Bank, so he shot down there. But okay. um, but it's the same same. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I grew up in uh, North Jersey, right outside the city here. Pompa. Pump, yeah, pump. Bro, yeah, pu- pu- uh, we don't pump our fists. We pump our gas. Shut but no, we don't pump our gas. We pump our fists. Was that from Jersey Shore? Was that what you were about to say? No, no. You're like not even a little no, bit. No, you're from I heard Pompton you say, Plains. Oh, Pompton Plains. I thought you were going to say pump, like make a Jersey Shore joke. Do you remember in the Jersey Shore there? Yes. You're like we don't pump our f- yes. yes, we pump our fists. Yes. Yeah, I love that, that you watched that show. I was obsessed with that. show. Me too. Obsessed. Why did we love it so much? Well, it is perfect comedy. Thank you. It is perfect comedy. It is perfect comedy. Yeah. yeah. And. I dig the reality shows when they just they're yeah they're maybe heightening some stuff for the camera, but it's I think they were too locked into who they were to really know exactly. the cameras were around exactly exactly and even now like I stumbled upon their new reunion or whatever it is and you go okay well <laughs> you know you start off you you get that first season you get them but yeah. then obviously eventually they become and clearly that's happened with them you know but. They are so, like you said, locked into who they are yeah. that it's, if anything, what I, what, I, what I think fame has done for them, being famous for the Jersey Shore, is they haven't tried to become anyone else. They're like, oh, no, this is what works. So maybe they're continuing the bit a little bit, but yeah. the bit was them anyway. The bit was them. They are the bit. They are the bit. <laughs> and they know it. Could have and been so the spinoff show. They are we the, are the bit. bit. Yeah, they are the bit. <laughs> Did you have a favorite character? Um, Who did you connect with? Who was your golden girl? Well, you know, I I like Snooki, so she reminds me of my sister a little bit. Cool, you know, yeah, very in a, in all the, the in the best way. Snooki had some redeeming uh, redeeming qualities, uh, uh, totally. Yeah. Like I could see her, like I I relate I relate to all of them. I mean, I grew up with all of them. Wow, I mean, that's where I grew. up. I mean, that is like that's that's home for me. The wow. accents, the whole the whole thing. And how not, did you, how not did you escape? all of them necessarily. I, you do luck, luck, and I, I started doing this shit when I was a little kid. That's so right. I was we'll like I was like a weird outlier kid that was like going from Jersey into the city during, you know, to like work on Broadway and then would go back home to Jersey and try to be a quote unquote normal kid. And, you know, but it was so two completely different worlds, but, you know. So if you were gelling your hair, it was for a Welch's uh, grape juice commercial not to go hit the beach and try to pick up gals. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, (laughs) Yes. Was Snooki the one that punched or got punched by a PE teacher? I forget. She punched the PE teacher, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Either way, that was a big moment. Big moment. She's uh yeah, and my sister kicked some ass when she was in high school. She's nice. like a tough, tough older like, younger cookie. This is my younger sister. Yeah. You know, she's just you know st- st- your st- standard, uh, and not in a negative way. I don't mean that she's just you just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But she is your Italian American New Jersey Guidette. Who love that? Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. Those um uh those shows really um. Yeah, I don't know. For I, I guess good for the whole landscape of the business, but there definitely felt like a m- moment where I was like, oh, why did I go to school to try to learn how to act <laughs> well when I could have just like – yeah, tried to go out into the wilderness and survive. Well, because you're just you're just a little bit too old. The the generation, yeah, you're after right. you you're a little younger than me. Just a little bit. You're, you're you look younger, 38? by the way. I don't know you're, what your skin regimen is. I'm 40. Just turned 40. You just turned 40. Okay. Uh, so I'm 40. What am I? 44. So yeah. So so right after you. Yeah. Everyone had, you know, 
grew up with cell phones in their hands. Yeah, that's right. So, so by the time they were teenagers and making decisions on, oh, if I want to be an actor, should I go out to LA? Should I go here? Should I go to drama school and all this stuff? They were already have, they already had their own YouTube channels. They were making their own <laughs> shit. They were, it's a different, I did not grow up like that. No. I, I'm an actor for hire, wait by the phone, wait for it to ring. Wow. You know what I mean? I still, like, to, for better and for worse, I'm lucky because I happen to make a yes. career doing that. Yes. I got very lucky. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm I watch all these people come up after me who are just like, oh, yeah, I just wrote this thing and I'm going to produce it. And, uh, you know, I got a director attached. I'm like, oh, what's, <laughs> fuck, what's that like? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I got a call back for, uh, yeah. fucking, you know, a Hulu show. <laughs> Did that make you, uh, I don't know, does, does knowing that you didn't come up in that, you know, era where, um, you know, obviously, like now, like you said, like there's way more ways. You don't have to just wait, you know, do your audition, but then it's like, yeah, having YouTube as a way, at least an outlet to, to, um, you know, I remember there was at one point when YouTube hit where it was like everybody was putting up a web series. Yeah. Yep. Because yes, it was, because yes. I think one got plucked from there. And so everybody was like, this is going to be the it. way. I got to make a web series. I'll put it on there and then people yeah. will find it. And then you come to find that like there's a lot of other shit between cat videos and two girls in one cup <laughs> that you're not going to get discovered from the tube as quick as you thought. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, although but those girls did get discovered. They, they, they did. <laughs> they did. They definitely did. <laughs> I'm constantly. Uh, so did the cup. <laughs> <laughs> People don't give enough credit to the to cup. Like, seriously, the cup did most of the work. It's, a t- it's the titular cup. Also, what do we? And we're going to spend way too much time on this. But was it a mug or was it a cup? Legit. Uh that's a maybe mug. Because, you're right. And you're asking, and then people were like, "Well, I don't want you to just go back and watch it." Do you hear yourself talk? No. Once was enough. <laughs> I have the soundtrack stuck yeah, in my head forever, which I'm not mad about. Yeah, that's fine. It's got like, it's got like Garage Band, like indie film. <laughs> Like student film vibes, <laughs> which I was always In like, like Tish student film, <laughs> to senior thesis film. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's great. Um, um, but but those but those the, but those kids. Yeah. What I mean, I sound like such an old dude, but like they were making these YouTube videos or series, these web series, and you know never got seen or whatever. But just the sheer fact that they made it and yeah. were proactive yeah. and like created for themselves is is great and that that's you know that's the difference between me and and you know it pretty much feels like everyone else that's out there right now but you know it's uh it's just you know it's the same thing generations before me were, of course we're saying shit like oh when i was younger yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm literally there now that's what's so <laughs> fucking weird is what like, what do you feel is your most at 44 and two or three kids two kids two, two kids. boys yep um, one of them has a dope name. I heard you say on one of the, Lazarus, S- uh, Laszlo, Laszlo, Laszlo. Where's the that Lazarus from? is fucking cool. Laszlo's cool. Maybe I don't know. Lazarus. Lazarus. I'm going to present. I'm going to present him with both. <laughs> name I'm just going to be like, hey, dude, listen to me. If given the choice. Listen to me. If given the choice, and basically, I'm giving you the choice. If yeah. You would like Lazarus. This isn't a hypothetical. This is, you could have it. You could have. You're still be. I could call him Laz. So it's same same. Wow. That won't go away. Lazarus. Where does it come from? Uh, so Laszlo, we stole. From cool. uh, a kid, it's a Hungarian name, but my old, our oldest son. What if you, Sid, I thought you were going to say we stole a kid? We stole this. Rid of that we kid, stole this Hungarian kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's been missing for uh, how old is? Five years. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we saw, like, we went to our oldest son's preschool one day. And there was a kid there walking with a backpack. He had his name on it, you know? Yeah. So Laszlo. And we were, I think Jenny, my wife, was pregnant at the time with, with the little guy. And we, we liked an L set. We liked, we were thinking of L names. Mm. And we just literally, it was just like on this kid's backpack. And we're like, we looked at each other. We're like, all right. So. That, no way. Yeah. So we, we took it. We it's just a lot of it. pressure, no? Coming up with the name. I know people that have waited until well, the a, day of. Yeah. Well, so Sid, we had a different name in mind the entire pregnancy. Like, pretty convinced that it was this other name yeah uh and then he was born and my wife was like nope that's not him and i i I understood where she was coming from and now his you know he's sid and he is obviously a sid but i my theory is no matter what you name the kid they will become like there's not you might not see it on day one but eventually you'll go of course he was this you know yeah so i was like he's fine we could go with you could name him sarah it's gonna be fine (laughs) like he'll become name doesn't define the kid yeah you'll just at a certain point go oh i can't imagine him being anything else right like of course so i was fine keeping that first name yeah she was like 
no, he is not this. So we had like we had three days in the hospital, and they kept coming in. They're like, "Are you ready to fill out the birth certificate?" And we're like, "Ah, no." So it was like literally an hour before we left wow. the hospital. They're like, "You guys really should fill this in. It becomes way more complicated <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah. you go home without a name and like do. It's way harder. Just do it now." And we were like, "Ah," and we liked sigh. We cool. like we like the one syllable. Yeah. Big Bigs is you know the the monosyllabic. You like that? Yeah, yeah. It's a great word. It's a great word. And that is uh, that is again for the viewers at home. I know what that is, but just to refresh over, it's the it's with syllables, right? Mono, yeah, yeah, yeah. One syllable. Yeah, that's right. Mono. I could have probably broke that down. Yeah, monosyllabic. Kids, weed will affect your memory. Uh, <laughs> maybe not your brain, but your memory, your thought process. I my my memory is shit. Yeah, and I'm convinced that had a From lot what? to do a lot with that. to do with a lot. Of, yeah. I'm have sure. you retired it? Yeah, I retired everything. Good for you. Yeah, that's got to. That's. Again, I had to. the good skin. Well, I yeah. didn't know how to do it p- properly anymore. But you did it right. I. I mean, I. You enjoyed well, yourself. Ultimately, wrong. I mean, I did. <laughs> yes, I had a great time. Good. I fucking. You look back. With I did it. I awesome. didn't miss out on anything. Good. Right. Like I yeah. did all the things. <clears throat> I also. But I. I got to a point where I was just like, oh, I'm not. This isn't normal. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the way I'm using this shit. Totally. I'm like, I think I maybe need to. So I. I just don't have a healthy relationship with it anymore. So I just can't do it. But. Um, but yeah, but I did it. But I'm convinced I'm is still that vodka water. This is straight vodka. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is uh, oh, <laughs> fucking hell. It's three o'clock somewhere. <laughs> is um, that's not the saying, Jason. Is um, <laughs> it's nine a.m. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> uh, is there is there a what vice though? Saying? As a well, you're oh, saying about the, the, the name of the kids. Oh Laszlo. yes, so we were like Psy. Yeah. So we liked a, a single syllable to go with the single syllable last name. Yes. It felt right. So Psy, we liked Psy, and I liked it because C Y. Because you know, there's this artist Psy Twombly that I think is dope, and I was like, oh, that's cool, Psy Big, Psy Bigs, and then cool. it was, I loved it. Yeah. But then we, one of Jenny's friends came in to visit him in the hospital to visit us, and she was like, oh Psy, like Gangnam Style, dump dump Gangnam Style. Do you remember Psy? That was it, and this was P S I. P-S-Y. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this was around the time that that had just gone viral. And we were like, and we were like, oh. You can't yeah, do it. we can't do that. You can't live in his shadows. We can't do that. Now, meanwhile, no one even, you have to like literally go, you remember that guy? So yeah. Yeah, you have to sing the I song. I wouldn't have thought you wouldn't have Psy thought. anymore. Exactly. But at the time. But at the time, we're like, oh shit, we can't You want your Psy. kid living in Gangnam Shadows? Exactly. Which sounds like the place where Psy lives. Gangnam Shadows. <laughs> Gangnam Shadows. It's like some weird estate. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know when you pull up and they've always got, yes. I'm always fascinated by the yeah. names of like. Yeah, on the wrought iron fence. Oh yeah. You're like, what the Gangnam Like there's in, in Arizona where my wife lives, there's, um, yeah, there'll be like, you know, Cactus Shadows. Or um, yep. or uh, I don't know. Oh, they named Lane. the developments. Yes, all the developments are named, yeah. and then the houses are sometimes named too. Yeah, yeah. No, it's weird. My my wife, uh, her family's from in Phoenix. What part? Uh, Paradise Valley. Her yeah, da- her dad is. Oh, very cool. Yeah, but so you go out there. Yeah, but I like I'll go. I'll, I'll borrow his car and go like run an errand or something, and I'm driving back, and I just I end up in six developments before his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is this the one? And then you got to punch in a code to get in the gate of the house, and it's like, oh, this is it's the wrong it. place. But the code works. It so all go, looks you go in anyway. You yeah. go in anyway. Like, Fuck it. I'm here. <laughs> Have you? Uh, um, man, you just reminded me of a time when I got uh, so baked, and I went to my buddy's apartment complex in L.A. It was mo- both about two years into stand up, so we're doing these open mics, and then we're you know going to each other's places, playing NBA 2K, and just commiserating and talking about how, where we want to be, where we aren't, and just shooting the shit, and. Um, and his apartment complex, I went back down to my car to probably get weed or something and go back up. And it just, the place, every floor looked identical. And his room <laughs> is, his was in the corner. And I just went to the wrong floor. And, oh, I went to go get pizza because I walked up with pizza. And I, the door I assumed was unlocked because because uh, I didn't lock it. So I opened it and flung it open with a pizza. And I go, who wants a motherfucking pizza? I went to a different floor. And there was a guy... <laughs> Uh, banging a girl doggy style over No a yeah, way. Yeah. And they both turned. And said, I do. I want some. I wish. <laughs> That's how the story should end. Yeah. But instead it ended with, get the fuck yep. out of here. Didn't stop, by the way. They kept fucking. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I didn't stop. Uh, I, was I, say, you, I kept you, walking like, in. I kept walking like, guys, in. it looks like. Guys, you guys are having fun. It's fine. I'm just going to put just the pizza I didn't up bring here. napkins, I so just... do you mind? I see a big stack. <laughs> Come on. What do you, you, you don't, clearly don't need them. It feels like you're going to finish oh, what you're supposed to. Yeah. That's great. Um, but, uh, okay, so, so grew up in, I wanted to ask you when, did you have <laughs> you, though. You opened their fridge. Sunny D? You <laughs> Sunny D? You got no Sunny D? Good call. That was, yeah. Remember that? Of course. Yeah. Um. Took me too long to think of that joke. By the way, you were already on to the next <laughs> subject, and I was like, "What's the fucking drink called? The orange drink? The orange? Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna well, drop it." Let me ask you this: They arguably had some of the best commercials, and you—I didn't know you were a kid actor. Yeah, 
Is that, I feel like most kid actors, commercials is how you, that's, that's how, your entryway into the business. I paid for college. Shut the fuck up. I mean, up. I dropped out of college, but so it ended up paying for other shit. But yeah, that was my, that, so, that was what I did as a kid. I was doing commercials and voiceovers and I did a Burger King commercial when I was 15 years old. I was a sophomore, maybe I was 16. I was a junior in high school. And I remember I came into the city to shoot it. Ted Demi directed it. It was a Burger King commercial. We shot at the Javits Center. And um, it was the first... I started when I was five, so mm. I would get paid, and I, didn't, I wouldn't know what I got paid, and my parents would sock it away and for you know for college. Yeah. And um, But when I was 16 and I started getting the checks for this Burger King commercial, I was like, I want to... Let me see these checks, man. Like, I want to know... Yeah. You know, I was kind of you know adultish i wasn't gonna oh i know i I was i was trying to convince her to let me buy a car when i turned 17 when i got my license and i was like come on how much i gotta know how much i'm making let me see the and i like opened the checks i was like holy shit i really this is fucking rad way more than you thought way more than i thought yeah for a national commercial i was like good lord that's fucking dope so yeah i paid for college and stuff holy shit yeah yeah was this their idea your idea were you uh, a funny kid you strike me as you were an animated i was like yeah kid. precocious yeah and, yeah definitely that but it was kind of weird so my older sister who is uh, almost seven years my senior. She, when she was a kid, was in this dance group in New Jersey, and they were, she was really good, and the girls were really good. So she was part of this like kind of you know all star little dance and Vogue uh, and Destiny's Child. Yeah, <laughs> it was, was her ch- and two other she girls. Was the child, yes, yeah, she was the child, <laughs> uh, and her destiny was to <laughs> end up not being a singer anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so she was, so they would like travel around That's and awesome. they were like really good. And, and because of our proximity to New York, a lot of the other girls, their moms started taking them into New York yep. and get agents and managers and do the like Broadway and acting things. So that was so your intro sister, to just the world. So my, yeah. So my sister wanted to do that. And my parents who did no background in entertainment, my parents, blue collar, New Jersey, moms and ours, dads like worked down at the rail yard. Um, they were like, okay, sure. I mean, I guess if she works, she could. You know, save money for college and cool. do, do that thing because you know three they had three kids. College was daunting. Yeah, shit. So, um, so then I was five, and uh, and I guess you know she, my sister had this manager who called one day and was like, I actually have an audition for you know five year old boys. You know, would, would you want to take Jason in? Would Jason want to go in? And I, at that age, I don't remember making a conscious decision like my mom asking me or me. Say, I, but right. I do. But I remember loving it. There was never a, like I was in. I loved it. And so at one point, my younger sister, Snooky, and my older sister, uh, we were all doing it at the same time. They it fizzled out for them. They didn't. They they worked a little bit. My younger sister did a Huggies commercial when she was a year and a half cool. that um, she still has some money from. Um, yeah, and uh, but, but they stopped. They stopped. They they weren't working as consistently, and it was just kind of annoying. They just wanted to be normal kids, and I was like, "This is fucking fun." You like, loved it. I kind of loved it. Yeah, and you I were did booking, it. and I was working. So that that's what helped. You know, because yeah, like, if you're consistently, I feel like if you're you're getting into it and you're consistently on set and getting to continue to yeah. just. Uh, you know, enjoy what you're already enjoying. Because I, I would assume that if you got a few and then didn't work for like six months, you probably would get be a little like, oh. The- Wh- which I would, and yeah. it would be a bummer. Um, but, but maybe not but, so much as a kid. Cause but as a, a but kid. I'm a kid. Exactly. Whoa. Right. So like, so I think about that. Like I think about, you know, when I was a kid and I would have little rough patches, you know, compared to when I was in a, Adult, you know, I've had rough patches, of course. Sure. It's way more stressful. Yeah. It's way more stressful. It's yeah. like, oh shit, I didn't worry about this shit at all. It bummed me out, but I got to, you know, b- play football and wow. be like a normal kid and go to school and hang with my friends and do all that stuff. So it wasn't, the pressure wasn't there, yes. right? It didn't really matter. Although I will say that at a certain point, like when I, at a very kind of integral, socially speaking, age, like in middle school, when, um, we had two elementary schools in our in our town, and they come together for middle school. And so it was right around that age that I was actually working a ton. And so the two schools come together in the middle school, and all new friend groups are made, right? That's where, like, you know, the... the totally, That's yes. where it happens. Yes. Goes through high school. When that was happening, I was working a ton, which was awesome. I was, like, in L.A. doing a TV show. I was actually in Seattle. I did a play at the uh, Seattle Rep. Yeah. I was there for, like, three months. Anyway, that was during seventh grade. I'd come back... Uh, from working and you know not work for whatever and i'd be in school but 
I, I missed uh, like I was trying to figure out who my oh, friends yeah, were. So there, were. So there was like a t- three year stretch, like seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade into high school, where it was like kind of weird. Like I didn't really know who my, I was trying to figure out my group, and, and there was no group that would even that even would be like, it, hey, let's take the a kid, little the actor kid. a little bit, yeah. but not like I had one or two. But they were, but again, like they would off they would go hang out and do things i couldn't play sports at that age because oh, i did i played sports when i was much younger because if i missed a practice for an audition like coach, coach didn't give a shit yeah, please when you, and you get, yeah. yeah when you get to high school it's like sorry dude you can't like be <laughs> like i'm not gonna play you on the weekend in the game if you're like no. gone doing a cheerios commercial on <laughs> tuesday like sorry dude <laughs> well, like I, I quit football sophomore high school to play danny zuko in greece and my coach was just like I was like, maybe I can do both. He's like, get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I walked in and tried to make a joke. I was like, I can't memorize the playbook this year. I got to memorize the lyrics to Grease Lightning. And he was just like, I think that's funny. And I was like, I, I do not. I did. I did. I, I initially, <laughs> when I composed when I, it in my head, it was hilarious. I thought it was going to be the thing that got us over the hump. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, um, wow. So, so, but you, yeah, you so strike, anyways, was like, that but was you like strike me as someone that's very social and, and obviously personable. So how do you, because those I feel like are formidable years that's, to really develop those skills yeah and like find your you know everyone uh you know not everybody stays friends with that um that core from that time totally but um did it uh did it bum you out ever to a point to where you're like i feel like i'm missing out so much yes that I, wow they want to yeah quit. so so um so i seventh eighth ninth grade i was working a ton and then <clears throat> i finished doing this play on broadway like the very beginning of my freshman year. Holy shit. Yeah. And I was like, I'd done it for about a year and a half. What play? That was the play we did in Seattle first for a couple months, then brought it back. It was a play called Conversations with My Father. Yes. Herb Gardner, uh, Dan Sullivan directed, Judd Hirsch won the Tony for playing my dad. It That's was cool. probably why. Yeah. I bet my mom, fuck, my mom goes S- to theater. Yes. All the time. I sw- that sounds so familiar. I bet I, she went and saw that. I, I bet, bet you she, she did. Saw you. That's crazy. I, I mean, if she would like, because it ran for a while. So 1,000%. Sure. Yeah, that's cool. Loves this Josh. was in 91, 92. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I did that and um, I came out of that and you, and I, did, I didn't have it, didn't, didn't work again for a while. I was still like auditioning. So yeah. I, I still like, I come out of that. Then now all these friend groups are formed and I'm kind of the man on the, the kid on the outside, you know, and they would all go off to their sports after school and continue to make friends. Yeah. And, and I would like walk home and kind of wait for an audition to come through. And there was just a real slow Man. stretch. It was like that whole rest of freshman year and the beginning of sophomore year. Like, I just remember thinking high school sucks. This sucks. Like I'm, I'm not hanging out. I have no friends. I don't have a girlfriend. None of that it was like puberty. I was also a late bloomer. So this was like puberty was happening yeah. because I actually, that role that I finished freshman year, I was playing a 10 year old, bro. What? I started it in seventh grade. I finished it in ninth grade. I was 14 playing a 10 year old. When I started, I was 12. That's how young I looked. When I, I finished when I was 14. How come you don't have an Oscar for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, so, but, but like, so now I start hitting puberty. I have no friends. I was just like, what the fuck, oh, man? Goodness. Like, I loved acting, but I hadn't, now I wasn't working, but I was still like going on these shitty auditions and waiting for something to take. And I was spending way too much time with my mom because she was the one that was driving me on auditions. Oh, and you're getting to this point to where your mom is like, you know, you need her, but you also give me some exactly. space. Exactly. But I can't, like, she's not letting me take the bus into the city by myself yet. Like, oh, that didn't happen man. for like another year or two. So, so I was just in this weird, like, zone where I thought, you know, I, maybe I should come back to this. Maybe I should like quit for now. If I want to be an actor, mm. I still can do it. Like I know I can do it. Yeah. Maybe I'll, you know, college and then I'll figure it out kind of thing. And so I remember going into the city with my mom uh, for this audition. And on the drive, after the audition, on the drive home, I, ta- I was like, you know, Ma, I think I want to, I think I need to s- just chill. Mm. I think I need to stop. I think we need to call the agent. I think we need, I was so nervous to say, not because of her, what her reaction was going to be. I just, well, I think I was, I was nervous for her reaction. Um, but not that she was going to be like, no, you have to, because she was never that mom. She never forced me to do it. I mean, she was crazy for other reasons and we had other shit, but. Also, you're, that you're not at an age to be totally formed 
you know, and have your wits about you to know that like she. It's Am I not making gonna, the right decision? Yeah, yeah. And 100%. Am I letting her down? Exactly. Like, it's not that. Exactly. Exactly. You, you know, will this fuck me for later? Like, totally. I yeah, can yeah. I come back to this? Yeah, totally. Yeah, you know what? And what else do I want to do? Should I be thinking about that right now? Because yeah. all I want to do is this. You're not. So I'm going to give up the thing that I actually want to be doing. Like, wow. is it, you know, so wow. so I had all these thoughts. I was nervous. I remember had the conversation with her in the minivan on the drive home. And uh, and I told her, and she was like, I, "All good, I get it, I totally get it." And truthfully, dude, she started working nights as a nurse so that she could take me on auditions during the day if I had an audition. Wow. So, um, so her whole life was fucked because you know, cra- like she was on a crazy schedule. My dad, I mean, it was, it, insane, it, huh? yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a uh, sacrifice that everyone had made. My sisters too. So I think there was a little bit of relief and all that stuff. And uh, and then the next day I get a phone call. The job that I had, the thing that I had auditioned for, yeah. before the car ride home, yeah. I booked. <laughs> Isn't this so, fucking is that always fucking, like that? Is that dude? crazy? Is that fucking crazy? So I was like, okay, I'm back. I'm yeah, back. I'm back. It was a so, like it was that. a soap opera. It was as the world turns. Yes. I ended up doing it for a year and getting nominated for a daytime Emmy. Yes, <laughs> Isn't that great? playing the role of Pete Wendell. Pete Wendell. I feel like everybody knows a Pete Wendell. Everyone knows a Pete Wendell. I feel like he's either like the fun neighbor that like, you know, comes over to borrow your dad's shit, but then also like gives you weird advice on the side being like, look, there's a (laughs) massage parlor that takes two blocks from here. (laughs) Or just, I don't know, make sandwiches. Uh, But Pete Wendell has an, it's an affable name. Yeah, totally. Who was this guy on the show? So this guy was, um, I was the son of one of the main characters of Julie, Julie Wendell, uh, or maybe she had a different last name because she was remarried, you know, eight times from yeah. <laughs> since my dad. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, J- Julie Snyder and I, Pete Wendell. And so I had been living with my grandmother in Seattle, Whoa, in Seattle. Um, and then I came back to visit her and ended up staying with her. And then she, and I was just this affable, funny kid that would come into these rooms and kind of be smart alecky. I wore my my earrings that I actually had pierced in real life, both hoops, both sides. I actually wore Fuck. in the show. Yes, yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> the possibility I had a tail. I'm not sure. Cool. Um, and and uh, and then we, the, my mom and I, Julie and I, found eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a suitcase. Uh, suitcase, Dumb and Dumber style. Dumb and Dumber style. Says a sw- Sam- 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 <laughs> Swanson. Sw- Sam- Samsonite. Samsonite. Bless you. And um, and uh, and then we st- we're like, what the fuck is this? Whose money is it? Like, this is crazy. What should we report? Should we turn it to cops? Yeah. It? And we instead decided, no, we're we're gonna keep it here because we found it in like some hints, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna stash it, and we start spending it. And it was literally no joke. One episode, one episode was about, I for my character storyline, was just me buying ice skates and going ice skating with a pair of ice skates that I, that I bought with... That were $700,000? <laughs> Wait a second. They were the most... They flew. You actually flew. <laughs> They were, it was before you, real flying They'd ice skates existed. They've been worn once by Vin Diesel, yeah. but signed by Magic Johnson pre-AIDS. Yeah. Um, wait a second. That uh, is awesome. Yeah. This is so why like, soaps it was so It was so unbelievable. I mean, obviously, just ridiculously Now, even dumb. as a kid, are you reading that? Oh, are yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. But you're an actor, so you're like, awesome. Or are you like... No, I'm like, this is so ridiculous. No, awesome. no, no. I, okay, I, I, I totally knew it, but... I, but I loved the job because I, first of all, it had brought me back, right? Like I was, I, I, I was. The job almost, I mean. I was done. I was like, <sighs> I think I'm done. Maybe revisit this, but I think I'm done. And then, uh, and that, so it brought me back. And consistent right? work, right? A and year and a half, you said? A, about a year. And I, and like, and tough work. First of all, trying to make that shit sound believable, but. Totally. But. The schedule. The schedule. Yeah. One full hour long episode a day. Right. So like I, I'm a great memorizer. I largely because of that. Wow. You gotta like memorize your shit, dude. The day of. Yeah, man. You're getting new scripts like day like yeah. monologues. The next day you're on a new show. Holy shit. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. And you get like two takes at it, bro. It's like, come on, get this fucking right. We do not have time. So it was great. And the people were great. It was fun. And they all knew they were doing like there were yeah. uh, there were one or two. There were one or two that were like, This is can't believe I haven't been nominated. This is Shakespeare. Yeah yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I had a couple buddies do like General Hospital and um Passions. Passions, sure. Um and uh one of them told me I was like, any soap tricks? And the only one he ever told me was like, 
and this might be he might have been fucking with me, but it was to uh, to to show to have like a ser- if there's a serious moment and you can't I guess. I guess manufacture, like get actually show the emotion. He's like, you act like you're smelling a really bad fart. So he would basically, <laughs> but he said it. Was, so I laughed like you just did. I was like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. And then he was like, it works. That's what I do. And so then I was like, do it. And he goes, he goes, tell me something. So like, tell me something uh, serious in a soap, and I'll, I'll respond. Um, well, here, let's let's set up a scene. Actually, sure. Your um, Pete you, Wendell or no? No, let's let's, let's uh, new let's new play. new no, okay, new okay, series. Okay, okay. We're on a show called um, Give It Up for Tony. Right? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh and you I I'm playing uh uh Tony uh uh Why do you have to be the lead? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony, I'm the lead. You're have the I lead. not done enough to you're prove lead, to you? You're lead Tony. Oh, okay. I'm Tony's brother, Anthony. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Let me finish. <laughs> okay, Fuck. so yeah. You're Tony uh-huh. uh Alexander. Okay. And I'm Anthony Alexander. Okay. And you uh are are uh you basically became manager of the Vons in our city that was like a big deal growing up and i was like below you you got promoted even though i'd been working there longer Mm -hmm. and uh and they tell you that you have to tell me your brother who'd been working there longer that you actually got the promotion and they told you to tell me okay all right and so hey buddy um one second one second yeah darlene yeah just bring the soup up yeah, leave it outside the door. You know which door. Did you? Uh, did yeah. they give you the crackers? Did you? Yeah, I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Tony's here. Yeah, my bro. Yeah, what are the Tony? So, yeah, Sprint. So, yeah. Okay, I love you. I love you. But yeah, what? Put on that thing tonight. And uh, Oreo McFlurry. Talk to you soon. What's up, bro? How's Darlene? <sighs> It's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, it's up, it's down, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, girls. It's, uh, yeah. Women be shopping. <laughs> yeah, they be shopping. <laughs> hey, listen, oh. man. Um, I, w- I was going to talk to you about this at home, but, uh, um, you seem stressed. What's going on? Yeah, I got, I just have to tell you. Are Look, you quitting Vons? No, no. Uh, but, you know, I just, before I tell you this, I just want to say that I think ultimately, ultimately, this could be good for both of us. This could be good for both of us. I think. I actually think. You sound like that, Ben Stiller in the Heartbreak Game. What are you doing I, well, right now? Well, all right. So, uh, so I know that there was that uh, position that was, you know, available G- yeah. GM of the Cold Cuts. And, oh yeah, um, been dreaming about that. Been having many a dreams, and yeah, most of them yeah, wet yeah, about this yeah. uh, this job. It's. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you. Tom, look, and if anyone knows, you know, their way around the the Gabagool, you know, it is you, Anthony. It's you. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I, well, should find out any day now. Any. Any hour now. No, actually, yeah, actually, check my email right now. Uh, they gave it to me. And there was it worked. <laughs> it worked. I did a little hype version. Stinky fart. A stinky fart. That's amazing. It worked, dude. <laughs> Disgust. <laughs> I wish I could go back and do half my career over again. <laughs> With this, with this <laughs> with gem, this with knowledge. this fucking gem. Get the fuck out of here! No, you're, you're. Let me tell you this, and I want to go back to it. You are a, uh, you're a fucking beast. You're, uh, you're one of the funniest dudes I've uh, seen on television and film. When you started following me, I geeked out, starstruck. Then I was like, I'm gonna fucking throw a hail mary on first down. And also, first of all, I never know. Again, to go back to social media and like how quick these types of connections can happen. Yep. Um, is bonkers to me and what I do enjoy about it. Um, and I guess, you know, you get to a point where you're like, all right, I guess I got enough goofy shit out there that maybe he People saw like one it. thing and then followed from that. Cause it's that, like, I know how I that's, do it sometimes. It's like, that's it's what like, happened. Really? That's what happened. Wow. I don't remember what the thing was though or where it was. Fine. Most people don't. Um, but. <clears throat> you know how they uh, when you when you, on the search on Insta, you know other people. Come, like yes. I went to that happens a lot. I've I found a few. So I think I went because you know I follow a lot of funny people yeah, yeah, and yeah. um and I think I went on and I was searching for somebody and then I watched the video, but then it you know automatically goes to the next thing, and I don't remember. 
because now I've watched so much of your stuff. I've oh, gone well, back and oh, checked well, out so okay, much yeah, of it. Yeah. So I don't remember what it was at first, but I can tell you that the the Sean stuff oh, yeah. <laughs> it had me. I was I, I had showed my wife. I was like Jenny, fucking come over here. Wow. You got you got to check this out because <laughs> like I had seen someone else do that filter. Yeah, like and it's just like oh god, what a fucking weird. Totally. And you did something with that. That character was fucking brilliant. And what's great about it. And this is, and now all your mall stuff is brilliant. And you tell me, this is a question for you. Sure. Like, you, you know, how much of, of your stuff, I mean, I just watched you, so clearly you're incredible at improv, <laughs> but you're also a great writer. Oh, thanks. Like, I, I feel like you probably write some stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, before you go and you, and you do it, because some of that stuff is for, so. Oh, before what? For like Sean. Do you no, write no, Sean? No. That's all just winged. Oh, yeah. You well, just wing it. I mean, write, I guess. I literally think about right before I'm going to do it, and usually what beats? Yes, yeah. I go well. Once I did the first one, I and people kind of responded uh, okay to it. I was like, oh, I kind of like that game of like he's doing the lift sixty nine, sixty nine, right? And I then like saying what he's done. Dave is like a callback. Dave's got to be something in. going on. Yep, and then listing what he did before a certain time. Yep, it's a little braggadocious. Yep, yep, and yep. then. Yeah, so just kind but of that's those what beats. I mean. That's yes. that, okay. that's what I mean when I say writer. Yeah. Like okay, gotcha. you yeah. you've created this whole thing, and then you you know you you yeah perform, a short beginning you middle and end performed yeah. around it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I, this guy's got a fucking great comedy mind. Oh, this guy cool, is man. fucking great. And then at, yeah, and your stand up is great. Your Doctor Phil's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, this dude is fucking funny, oh, man. Like, cool, how man. do have I not really? Yeah. You haven't been on my radar. I apologize, yeah. but I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking aces and then you like reached out right away i was like yo what's up man i'm down I'll i do know it. and I, I i was like fuck is it like too quick i think i waited maybe a day but i was like <laughs> i was like i was flattered I, man no no i was psyched i was psyched and, and I, figured, I tried to not fan out too hard but like you dude know. i've got an ego yeah of course, it feels great i love it no it's like it's i was incredibly flattered um especially because you're fucking funny so so when someone funny is like dude i love you i'm like oh, th oh that's cool. fucking good makes me that's feel rad, great man. yeah no, it makes me feel awesome. So I was like, yeah, hell's yeah, I'll do your podcast. Yeah. I'm not in LA though. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then literally randomly. Like, <laughs> which by the way, it is for, uh, you know, it, it worked out because like for a second there, I was like, God, it is so quick that I was like, all right, well, I'll be there in January. And then, and then the next week later, I'm like, like, actually tonight. And you're like, what? <laughs> you're like, Open like, the door. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, a little too Look quick. out your window. <laughs> I <laughs> I'll hold the mic through the window. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Start talking, man. Come on. You're making this weird by Nadia Sandy. Adam, did you buy a plane ticket just to come and <laughs> oh, do God. this podcast? Um, yeah, dude. It was... Uh, no, I'm, I, I love it. I love it. The sh And Sean is <laughs> truly like... Oh. Every bro, dude, I think we both come into contact with, still know. And I bet you, and I want, oh yeah. And I wonder for you too, if there's an element, because I, one other thing I was impressed with, I was mm -hmm. like, whenever I've done one of those filters, yeah. you have to be very, if yeah. you move the camera totally. off a little bit, shit goes away. Oh, I had a take before right, the last right. one where it went off and it showed my face from it. I go, I can't use you that. You can't use it. That's almost like breaking no. the, like it's. Exactly. So it's literally like you're doing these long one or shots. <laughs> you got to keep that shit trained. Yeah. Like it's a, it was oh, a, yeah. it's a complex. I appreciated <laughs> everything that went into it <laughs> well, even the mall ones i'm doing sometimes yeah once i get what i'm gonna say and by the way no fear as far as the people and kids that but, are walking by i me, love it hear me say some very crude shit yep yep but you know whatever it's like i, nobody I noticed that too i love i love it i love, fucking love it man. well you yeah. uh you know uh, saving silverman is in my top five favorite comedies of all time and i know you, you can you be humble laugh it off it's true. I think it's a flawless movie. I think it's one of a kind. I think the cat, the, the, the casting cast of is you, amazing. It's unbelievable. The cast it's is also amazing. a story that I feel like I've ne never seen and never seen since. And it's it's truly, and we could talk about this, uh, you know, um, all night. But like that type of comedy, I just I just won't see it anymore. Yeah, because I don't know why. A, I think you know you could argue that just comedy in general, them trying to. Just maybe, uh, you know, uh, instill some of that into the bigger budget movies, mm -hmm. I guess. Yep. But like that to me uh, is just, uh, it's just a flawless movie from top to bottom. And you crush it. And uh, I love Loser. Um, all the pie movies, obviously. Um, but also, the one of the, and I want to make sure I, I mention this, you know, I went and saw all the pie movies probably five, six times in theaters. But well, like, you're, uh, you could tell, you, those types of movies, you can't just um, 
you can't just play like uh, you, you have to still you know have chops for right, all right. for all that stuff, and especially you know taking a a, a backdrop, um, especially for the first one um, uh, with high school like that, that that people really connect to you guys mm-hmm, and feel mm-hmm. like either you are there's somebody for everybody, but really to be like. I mean, it was crazy. I literally felt like I was like there the whole, t- which was really crazy to be watching at mm-hmm. that stage of my life to be like, "Fuck, this feels this like this me. could be this is my life." Th- y- there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and you know, people, I th- thank you for saying all that. Man. Yeah, dude. And yeah, and, you're, uh, you're really, uh, you're a talented dude, man. Thank and you. And very fine. And and the comedic chops. I mean, even just playing around right there. But it's like, there's no. It's also it's the reason you've been working so long. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. at a, at a certain point, like there's, and then not be a piece of shit. I mean, you know all the things. Be a, yep, be yep, fun to work yep, with, but yep. um, but yeah. How does has it always come? Just like comedic timing, like everything, like to not, you know, you're always so grounded. You know, even with like the, I just think of crazy moments with you and you, Eugene Levy, mm-hmm, and how mm-hmm. like straight and real you play it, which is like what makes some of those things pop even more. Yeah, I mean, did you just always kind of have a, uh, you know, um that that ability uh with comedy um thank you man yeah. i yes. i appreciate oh man yes all those kind of words Gotta i really really do um yeah i think you know comedy is tricky like i i i i think you can't you're either funny or you're not i i believe and and um there are different important elements to comedy um one of which you mentioned i think maybe the most important is timing <clears throat> and I just don't know that you can teach that, man. Like, I feel like you either, I feel like, you know, and talking to my family, because I have kids now and just watching them and, you know, seeing how they are and, you know, what makes them laugh and their kind of senses of humor, what they think is funny and how they sort of perform. Yeah. Um, you know, I've talked to my family and stuff about me when I was a kid and they're like, yeah, you've always kind of been like that. You've always had the time. And, you know, I did, and I remember I did, I did a sitcom when I was 12 years old. And it's like, I learned then that comedy is a song. Like it is, it is, especially sitcom, multi-camera sitcoms, yeah. especially. I mean, it is, it is a, it is music. Yep. And comedy is as much about what you're saying as it is how it lands on the ears. You know, it, it's like, that is such a big part of it. Mm. That's why half the jokes in sitcoms, they might be stupid, but if they're delivered at the right time, the right, in, you know, and, and timing even within a sentence, like hitting the certain syllables. Like, mm. I've always loved that shit. Cool. Like, when I do takes... You nerd out on that. I nerd out on oh, that cool. stuff. So, like, when I'm doing takes, too, I'm always doing different shit. Like, I'm always trying... You know, like, oh, let's, let, let's try hitting this word instead. Maybe it'll be funnier, you know. Um, I, I, I fucking love that shit. So, so I, but I think I've just always kind of had that ear for it. And that's just, I don't know, is it luck and And big comedy whatever, fan? But, like, like, as a kid, like, were you? Big comedy fan. Yeah. And, my da- and my dad is, a, is very funny. Um, actually, both my parents are funny in their own way. Yeah. My dad is particularly funny. Um, but has a darker sense of humor mm. and is and and also a stupid like loves the stupid shit like I love quote unquote stupid humor yeah it you to me anything that makes someone laugh is smart like to me laughter equals like comedy totally. is smart like you yes. can't to make someone laugh it is a it is an impressive and yes. difficult thing I think. Um, so, but like those quote unquote stupid comedies that I grew up watching that he loved, he would take me to see Naked Gun and wow. Airplane and like wow. all the, you know, the, 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 those guys, um, uh, and you know, p- p- Fast Times and Porky's and like, he loved that shit, Meatballs, Caddy he Shack, loved yeah. Caddyshack, yeah, dude, right? Like, he loved, we would watch that shit together and still, it's his, so like Saving Silverman is actually my dad's favorite movie. Get the mine. fuck out of here. Yeah. He loves it. But also, it. duh, dude. Yeah. It's, and again, it falls into that same boat <clears throat> of just like, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, tell me, did, um, that was, po- that was post pie, yeah? So that was post pie. So yeah. that was literally, so I, <clears throat> is that how you judge things pre and post pie? Mm. It is definitely a, a demarcation yeah. in, in my life. Yeah. A very, very heavy one. I've now, lived more life on the other side of it, which yeah. is crazy to yeah. me, you know? It's been 25 years, or 20, 20 since we shot it. 90, Almost 25. It'll be 25 years we shot it this summer. Oh, wow, something's gotta in happen. That, in that nuts. And so, and you know, I was 19 when I auditioned for it. 20, 20 when I shot it. So so I've lived more life on this side of, of, of pie, post pie. But yeah, I, I remember, 
I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, I didn't tell you I have COVID. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <clears throat> so sorry. some sort of pox, whether it's monkey or chicken. The RSV, some initial <laughs> thing that's not Oof. good. It's a virus. Yeah, it's definitely it's a virus. Fine, yeah. I got uh, the uh, Kirkland brand <clears throat> from Costco vaccine, so I'm, <laughs> I'm chilling right now, dude. Uh, so I remember I shot the movie. We shot it in the summer of 98. And then I was, you know, we had it in the can, as they say. But I, no one knew who the fuck I was anymore. But, you know, my manager at that time, I signed with a manager and a new agent. And it was their job to be like, yo, this kid's got a big movie coming. He's, you know, it is. As, as time, the sizzle, right? As exactly. And as time passed after we shot it, and it got closer and closer to the release date, the more pe buzz around it there was, especially within the industry. People were like, oh, this American Pie thing. It, it wasn't even called American Pie until, until like the last, like, two months like the in, the, in the spring it, it changed to american pie no the first the first script that i got sent you ready for this yeah the title was written trademarked by the writers guild untitled teenage sex comedy that view that readers will probably hate but we think you will love that can be made for under 10 million dollars <laughs> yeah good thing they shortened that yeah but that's wow. that was the actual title wow uh and then it, and then it just and when we shot it that's when we shot it they changed it to east great falls high no east grand rapids high which is a real because that's where the writer went to school he mm. based it on that so that's when we shot it was east grand rapids high so i still have like from rap of production like the gifts that they made i yeah. says east grand rapids high wow. like an east grand rapids high t-shirt or whatever or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm lying to you. It was East Grand Rapids. Before we shot it, they changed it to East Great Falls High because they realized they can't do Grand Rapids because of legal reasons if people come back and say, that's me, because it was based on Friends of the Writer, yes. these characters. Yes. So he's like, we can't do it. We have to change the name of the high school. So then it became East Great Falls High. So I have East Great Falls merch and, sh you know, swag, that's I should amazing. say. <clears throat> and then before it came out, it was changed to American Pie. Did you... Uh, when you got the audition for it, yeah, um, and stop me if if this is just if you've if there's certain elements we've just talked uh, you know ad nauseum over it, but um, I did hear something that you said on on a uh, show uh, that you had turned down uh, something on Home Improvement, yeah, because yeah. an arc on that because <clears throat> the movie was getting ready to come out and your manager yep. maybe said that like. And I think rightfully so, right? Like yep. you only can be new once, and being introduced through that versus if everyone saw American Pie and was like. Is that the kid that was JTT's best yeah, friend? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, like they people see you. I mean, look in in hindsight, if I had done the arc on Home Improvement, it would it would, yeah, it would it have mattered? It, it wouldn't have. Although yeah. although there is some crazy sort of uh, connection. Of, if I had done the Home Improvement, it's it's so it would have been so ironic. Is, I don't know. Is irony what it is? I'm not sure. But they originally wanted for my role Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Whoa. That was the original. So when I auditioned for American Pie, or it was untitled, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, sex yeah. comedy. Yeah, yeah. When I auditioned for it, I went in, read for the casting director. He was like, want you to come back, read for the directors, two guys. Did you feel good about it right away? Nailed it. Crushed it. And also, like, I had been reading, I was fairly new to LA. I'd gone out to do this TV show in 97. It was canceled after 13 episodes. At this point, I had dropped out of two colleges, and I was like, I'm staying out here. I'm going to test the fucking waters. I'm staying out here. I'm going to try pilot season. Ended up booking a pilot, um, which did not get picked up. Mm. Um, and then I got American Pie. But during this whole time, it was like a, it was the teen movie renaissance. I mean, it was, there was, you know, Scream had just come out as well. So it was horror and comedy, but it was- Can't Hardly Wait before- Can't Hardly guys? Wait yeah. was right before us. So it was just, it was happening again, these these movies. And I was the perfect age, Bro, yeah. in the perfect place, yeah. new to Hollywood, you know, just on this pilot. So like casting directors were aware of me. It was just like- I was gonna say, they're looking for unknowns, right? It was ready to happen. I, I It just felt like something was gonna happen. Wow. But I, I was reading and auditioning for- everything like i was auditioning nonstop. it was incredible so but in a good groove i was in a groove but yeah. but i could have gotten any one of those things like there were moved like any one of them and they were all fine i but i would but they were you know dimension films and miramax and uh you know mgm and Lionsgate and all this shit i'd be like this because i you know growing up i mean i had done a tv series out in la and i had done broadway but those were sort of my big and it's soap opera yeah so like a studio and i and then a bunch of independent yeah, films yeah, yeah. so like a studio movie was like holy shit yeah. so i was coming close on a lot of these like studio films these and um and I got sent the script for what 
turned out to be American Pie. And I read that. I remember sitting, laying down on my futon that I never pulled out. I always slept in the couch position in this, in this shitty apartment in West LA um, that I shared with this woman, Charlotte. I remember reading the script, dying laughing, going, oh, wait, this is... This is what I'm supposed to do. This is different than all the other ones. This is... this. All the other ones were like, okay, cool, teen comedy. Oh, I could play that. I could do this fun. Great. I would die for the role. And then this came along. I was like, holy shit. This is fucking hilarious. Or the opening scene. I need to be this guy. Like, I would... Spoke to you. I was just like, holy shit. I want to be this guy. I can see myself doing this. I'm like, this this spoke to me so hard. And it was just so funny. I mean, I finished the script. I remember calling my manager and being like, oh my God, dude. I mean, I, I have to read for, you know. And he was like, we got an audition, you know. But back then, again, it was just like reading for casting directors. Went in, read for Joseph Middleton, brought me back to read for the directors. Directors loved me. Feedback was, I'm their choice. But the studio was still unsure yeah. if they were going to go with unknowns or if they were going to do names, particularly oh for that role, because it was kind of the like main dude. And ultimately, I found out the guy was Jonathan Taylor Thomas that they were hoping to get. And he ultimately passed, I believe, because... And I haven't talked to him about this. I'd love to get his side of the story. But my version of it and my... Hold that thought. Guys, bring him in. <clears throat> <laughs> wow. They were supposed to bring in a JTT John- lookalike. I'm sorry. And he was going to do a whole thing. A with whole bit. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have the budget for extras. <laughs> That's okay. Doppelgangers. Should we just pretend, like continue the bit as what? Anthony and Tony? <laughs> <laughs> you we're joke, but cut, that's going to be a grocery. show we put up yeah, yeah. the next time I come to New York. That's amazing. Wait, so... Uh, so, so, so uh, he passed for he, whatever reason. Yeah, well, he was home improvement. He didn't fit in with his... Because like, this was aggressive. You know, this 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 Wholesome was like family hard... Comedy? This was yeah. hard R, for sure. There was no... This was a hard R. Tim Allen couldn't even, could have even said something to him. But, oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, <laughs> I think that man don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? I thought that was a bit, dude. You actually talk like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at the TCAs recently, and I was like, he was just like, <laughs> like, are you kidding? Turn it off, man. Dude, Be seriously. a person. Come on, dude. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, so when they call so, you. Oh, so uh, that was, I was, I don't remember the phone call where, where I was um, when it happened, but I remember just, I, I also, before I got the official offer, my manager like set me up on a general meeting with the executive over at Universal. It was a whole thing, but it was a, it was a, like a month and a half or two months of, of like from the time I auditioned to the time I got the offer. And it was like, I had never wanted anything. So I was like, this has to be pleasing. Every day you're waking up hoping that like, yeah, yeah. how do you distract yourself? Jerk off and yeah. weed, smoke a lot of weed. So much weed. In fact, that when I finally got the part, <laughs> when I finally got the part, I was so excited. Then they're like, okay, I was in, I remember I was in Jersey visiting my friends and uh, my manager's assistant out in LA calls me and he's like, all right, they need you to do the uh, cast physical when you get back to LA next week, you know? And I'm like, cast physical, what, what does that mean? What do you mean? I'd never done a cast physical before, you know, it's for insurance. Mm. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, well, you have to go to a doctor and you got to fill out a form and they got to check you. And I'm like, dude, d- d- do they do drug tests? Oh, like, is fuck. it drug tests? So, full, full, and I'm high as this conversation is happening. <laughs> full panic attack. Full, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm, ju- I'm blowing my one opportunity. I'm gonna get drug tested. And got- meanwhile, now I'm like, are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah. No movie would get made by the right. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, god, it would no. be in pile. Like, no, nothing. there's no way to. So, but at the time, I'm 19 years old. I've got my first like big part, and I'm like. You know, oh my God, I'm gonna fucking. They're gonna Holy know shit. that I smoke weed. It was so silly. They don't but, even. They didn't even test yet. They're like, but, yeah, no, they don't. Even do, they're, they're, you literally go in. They don't even check. They're like, open your mouth. All right, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> Dude, do I you know. get cold sores? Right. <laughs> okay, great. Are you sexually active? You're not pussy. Yeah. All right, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but, but I remember my manager though, uh, or his assistant, who was also young and like didn't quite know, was like, ah, uh, fuck, I don't know, oh, I don't know. And yeah. I was like, oh my god, give me some. But. They repped Jason Bateman, and they called my manager's assistant. Called Bateman to find out. I was like, I know who to call. <laughs> called Jason Bateman, and found out that no, they never do a drug test. He has nothing to worry about. And I found out through that. That's how I found out that I was like, oh, it's all good. And then I awesome. continued smoking weed with my friends yeah. in Jersey, and then like went out to LA and did the movie. That's the best part. Yeah, you're literally yeah. probably mid rip. Mid rip. Like they're not going to test. Totally. <laughs> you're sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bateman said it. Which Bateman? Justine or Jason? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. Wow, dude. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, guys. Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast, and I'm sitting down because I got some big news. Usually, I'm standing up to do comedy, but I'm sitting down now because I got... The deal of a lifetime. First of all, sitting is bad for you. We all know that. Whether we're sitting on planes or sitting on a beanbag chair watching porn in front of our kids, there's just too much damage you do on the body. Thankfully, Axion has come up with a chair that allows your pelvis to move the way it does while you walk. So all 33 vertebrae align into perfect posture. The result? Better breathing, better blood flow, and relief from the pain. It's crazy what you can do when you set your body to do it. Now, these guys are homies of mine. My buddy Dennis uh, worked with the Clippers as their doctor for 27 years. He runs a wellness center called Peak Wellness. He's a fucking gangster and has uh, saved me from surgery numerous times. Uh, I actually met Justin Bieber at his place. Um, and uh, and I was in my boxers getting cupping done. And Bieber and I locked eyes. And I was like, this is how we were supposed to meet. And Bieber smiled and I never saw him again. Um, but uh, this chair is a game changer. It's changed the way I live. It's changed the way I breathe, the way I sit. And you guys right now can get that chair for 25% off. Uh, using the promo code ALN25 at all33.com. Go to all33.com and use promo code ALN25 for 25% off this chair. It's incredible. You got to get it. It's the only chair out there to get. We will be getting them for the studio, but don't take my word for it. Check out this video. At All33, we've always pushed to reimagine the way we work. That's why we designed our revolutionary sit-in-motion technology to help people perform and feel their best. Then all of a sudden, the whole world was free to rethink how we work and especially where we work. And as Americans came home, so did we. We approached the design of our chairs with a person and planet-first mindset. That's why we chose to build them here in the United States. Manufacturing in the U.S. means we're able to have eyes on every step of the process. From material sourcing, to part production, to testing, even shipping. And we're able to recycle materials, use less energy, and reduce our carbon footprint. We've built the healthiest chairs you will ever sit in to keep you and the world moving. Because movement makes things happen. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, then I shot the movie and then it was just kind of another waiting game though. It was like, all right. And I, re- and I remember the phrase my manager uh, used, um, you know, he said, this is lightning in a bottle. He's like, this is, we have to be very smart now about what we do. And I was just like, again, since I was five years old, you audition for whatever comes across mm. your whatever you get called to audition for you go and audition for and then if you get the call back you go back and if you get you, you, you know the you do it you don't turn i've never i had never tur- said no to something that's crazy that was crazy to me it was such a fucking wild thought and he was like you know i got like offered a pilot that year as well like the following pilot season and he's like no i i really don't you, you shouldn't do it because if you do it cuz this movie's coming out in the summer and we're going to put you in movies after that. That's what's going to happen. You're going to be you're going to be in movies after that. So you don't want to be in a TV series because you won't be able to do those. And I'm like, what do you mean? I don't want to be. In it. What are you saying? Yeah. This is crazy. Of yeah. course, I want to audition for this. It was so wild. The idea of not being able to have the opportunity. To it was do. so wild to me. But he was fucking right. And I ended up doing like a two picture deal <clears throat> with uh, Miramax before mm. the movie even came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you were reading the script and you, what stood out to you? Scene one because the, you know. All the stuff with everybody seeing you jerking it mm-hmm. is like so iconic. And so one of the – if I had to make a list of things of like – of where the whole theater I remember crying laughing. Mm-hmm. Like I think of that. I think of a moment in MacGruber and then maybe Hangover where I'm like mm-hmm. I remember being in the theater multiple times and it just being – People losing pa- it. Losing it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, – that and I guess the pie probably stick out, but like a lot of moments. That's what's yeah. so great. It's a very quotable movie. It's a very like moment to moment. Again, the casting was so great. 
Um, the set pieces, a lot of big, all the big set pieces, like there's multiple ones. Like What stood out though when you were first reading it, you were like, I can't pie. wait to shoot that. The pie, yeah. the pie. And you were laughing. And I, like, I, was, I was like, this is fucking crazy. This is, un- this is so good. I, this is so funny. But then to be honest, the day of, the day the pie scene, we, we had to shoot it, I was, I was, I freaked out. I was like, because you couldn't get it up for the pie. I couldn't get the. They brought in a very, very <laughs> not my type of pie. I just said, guys, I, I like, I can't just. This is before Viagra, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. Anyway, they had like a fluffer pie for me that they brought in that would jerk me off between scenes, and then I would fuck I the real read pie. That. You know, this is why you got to talk. You go right to the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they brought in a fluffer. It was great because Ellen great. Boysenberry. <laughs> That's my jam, literally. Oh my god! And we'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. <laughs> uh, wait, that uh, yeah. I love that you thought it was funny and hilarious. Because like, did you know it was going to be iconic, or were you just like, "This no. will be a fun set piece"? Like no, said. but I, I just knew, again having comparing it to all these other movies that I was reading and auditioning for, it was just so on another level. Yeah. Taking more chances, y- y- just the whole new. It was like, oh, this. This is it. This is the one. That being said, it's not like I knew it was going to be the hit it became. I did not know what was going to be funny or not funny. But once we started shooting, even if the, the table read was the first time, not the first, I guess the first time I was reading the script, I was yeah. like, this is special. Yeah, yeah. But then the table read, it was, you know, oh, this Everybody is- was like defined characters and you just you just saw it all. I saw it. I was like, oh my God, the Stifler Sean. I was like, oh my God, who the fuck is this guy? First time Speaking him? of Sonny D, he had done, before that he had done a Sonny D commercial. That was it, okay? Get the fuck yeah, out yeah, of Yeah, 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 yeah. Look up Sean William Scott, Sonny Delight commercial. Um, it's funny, that's what he had done. He takes a sip, it's almost as good as Stifler's mom. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who she is yet. But I'm gonna fuck her in a yeah. movie in two years. <laughs> oh no, we'll do he one doesn't. More just to wait, he doesn't. He doesn't fuck her. Yeah, Hold yeah, on, yeah, I messed yeah, that. I yeah, messed yeah, up yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 semantics. Yeah. Whatever. Wait, so okay, uh, so you meet him for the first time. So you all, meet everybody. everybody. Yeah, I, I, Eddie K. Thomas, who played Finch, he and I had met. He was a kid actor in New York as well, so, and we actually had the same agent. So he he and I knew each other. He was actually an extra in a scene of mine in As the World Turns. Cool. And he was a city kid, so I would like come in from Jersey. An audition with him, but he had his crew of city kids that he would then like walk home with yeah, after, yeah, and yeah. I would like get back in my mom's minivan and go home to Jersey. So like we never talked. We knew each other. We would always be like, hey, you know, like kind of like give a nod, but never hung out, never anything. And then literally, I was in my agent's office in New York after having booked it one day, and I was visiting. You know, I was com- I came back east, and I was in her office, and there was a picture of Eddie on her desk. And I was like, oh, Eddie, I, I, what's up with him? I didn't realize that she had even repped him as yeah. well. And she's like, oh, he just got cast in the movie with you. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Wow. And then so literally at the table, read, we like looked at each other. We were like, Eddie, yeah, Jason, yeah, what's up, dude? And wow. we've, we, we've been best friends since. No way. Yeah, Eddie's my boy. Eddie's my boy. Was also with him yesterday. Uber talented, man. That great. Ta- he's so great. I mean, he's the- a real one. He's like, he's, he's awesome. But again, kid actor, like, you know, just, just, uh, Don't take but, things too seriously. Yeah. And like, you know, like me, had just the right amount of success as a kid mm. to like become good at our what we do, yes. and to know all the tricks and to be professional and to like get a taste of it and know that we wanted to do it and take it seriously, but not enough success to where it like fucked us up or got to our heads or made us known for something that we, you know. It's a good point, man. Cause, yeah, I mean, you probably know of from coming oh, up with kids yeah. that just. Got a little bit too much of whatever it was, yep, yep, and just couldn't uh, balance it. Totally, yeah, a hundred percent, man. And we, you, and you know the kids too. I mean, you've, we obviously know the famous yeah. stories of people, but like, yeah, it's it's a very real thing. So I feel like he's kind of like that. So we we've, we've been on this ride together for to make all these movies with uh, your best buddies, yeah. like truly bonkers. It's it, it was, and did the whole cast come together? Everyone came together yeah. when we shot. I mean, some of us keeping of course, better touch, yeah. obviously, but um, but during the movie, but I mean, oh, we had a blast that first screen, movie, I've, especially because yeah. you know Chris Klein, myself, Eddie, we were kind of a, a trio that really kind of, but you know, even even Thomas and and Sean as well, and Sean, you know, Sean's kind of private and does his own thing, but he is so funny and fun. Like so, when we're all on set together. It's just nonstop. It's just nonstop. I mean, actually, the last movie, the reunion that we did in, we, it was the only one we shot on location, or the whole thing on location. Yeah. We shot part of American Pie 3, the wedding, in Northern California. But everything else was shot in L.A., but the last one we shot in Atlanta. 
And we actually got in trouble. The producers had to talk to us at one point because <laughs> we were we were making such crazy jokes like crude like american pie-esque yeah like it's funny like we do a take yeah. where in the take we're doing something you know outlandish yeah. and you know not pc yes. and then it, it, we would cut and we would just kind of keep making jokes and yeah. making each other laugh and yeah. but we were in atlanta it was a little more the crews were a little more you know buttoned up buttoned up and we got they were like guys you gotta and this is pre, like, you know, the Not way things are. Culture, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, they were like, you can't. <laughs> we're like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but we would just roll. We had a dude. We had a fucking blast. Would you guys do that on the movies in general? Would they like let you play an ad lib or was the script pretty? Yeah. yeah. No, there were definitely, yeah. there were definitely ad libs for sure. I mean, I mean, my, all my stuff with Eugene, like he would, he, we would come in and. Surreal, by the way. Surreal. We would come in and rehearse. Um, and improvise. And a lot of the stuff that was improvised, the writer would be in there with us. So it'd be the writer and the director were directors in the case of the first movie. And we would start improvising. And then the writer would sit there and be like, yep, yep. And start writing and oh, rewrite, man. rewrite the scenes based on me and Eugene's improvising. You're welcome. And so, yeah. And so we'd come in and we'd have now these new scenes. And then we'd even improvise a little bit off of that. But, but, you know, you, you, one of Eugene's many, many incredible comedic traits mm. is that he can make things that are written look like they are completely improvised on the spot. Wow. So like we would do a rehearsal and he would actually improvise, but then the next take, he, and then we do it for real and it would seem like he literally just came up with it at, right there. It's, it's, it's just like, he's, he's just, uh, he's, he's just incredible. He's, Did, he's, I can't say enough nice things about yeah, him. Yeah, a legend. Did, were there, uh, I mean, cause most, uh, of the cast, I guess, was um, coming in pretty fresh, right? And yeah, and then I mean, he, he and then he walks in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But was he kind of? He didn't like give a big speech and kind of wasn't. Yeah. Everyone's looking up. He was. Everybody was on the same playing field. We're all just want to make this fun movie. That's he kinda, worked. He worked two days on the first movie. Oh wow, or three days. So wow. like something. Yeah, so he's re- in and out. Ridiculous. Yeah. He had. He had no idea. That it was going to be what it was going to be. He had no idea that his part was going to become. He was just like, okay, another gig. He's just, another gig. Wait, so okay. And in fact, he did it because his. I believe Dan, or was it his? I think Dan or Sarah, their kids. Dan, of course, now Shit's Creek. You mm-hmm. know, they created oh, yeah. that together. He's he's brilliant. But Dan was in high school at the time. So he's Dan's just a little younger than us. And Dan was like, no, oh, you got to do this. Like this is really funny. And Whoa. so he's like, okay. So he did it, and like. He came in and, re- you know, love, he, according to him, he's like, oh, and I, I didn't expect to have such great rapport with you. And all, it was all kind of a surprise to yeah. him. And then the movie doing as well. He's like, he had, he, and he's so grateful to it because it gave him a whole new, new audience, a whole new thing. It did, right? It jumpstart, it re just ignited his whole career, just took off into another stratosphere. Cause he was such a staple, still is, of the Christopher Guest community. Yeah. Is but, how but, I got intro to but him. But Christopher before- Guest, Christopher Guest was like best in show hadn't happened yet. Or maybe it did. Best in show, I think, happened, but none of the other ones. Like, it was still, it, you know, Spinal Tap, he wasn't in. So Guffman it was, was... I think oh, Guffman, Guffman I'm yeah, sorry. That might have been out. But still, that that's wasn't the one. like... That's, that's the one, not Best in show. But the other ones weren't out. Right. right. But I, I knew him from, like, the John Candy yes. stuff. Because him and John were really good friends. So it'd be like, you know, Armed and Dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Splash. Yeah. Right? Wow. That was my favorite role of his. And then, you know, the uh, Vacation, oh, National Lampoon's yes. Vacation, the Family Truckster. Yes. Um, so all the John Candy stuff I knew him from, but... <clears throat> speak, yeah. speak to the popularity of it. because And can you take yourself back truly, like, to the the moment when it... Because I, I feel like there's a handful of comedies over time that truly have had an impact on the entertainment world, on the film world, and on such a like um, a, a special time for so many people that like I was saying about like watching it in theaters and feeling that connected to it and feeling like it was like the anthem to your experience mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. fucking bonkers to me. And yeah. so I know it's not lost on you. So, no. so at that time, though, to be a part of it and to see and I, I'm sure there's some like self-reflection as it's happening where you're thinking back to like, man, I was almost going to quit and fucking yeah. be in here. And you think of all those things, you probably get overwhelmed with emotion thinking about uh-huh. it, but like, just if you can at least speak to a little bit of when it starts to kind of just like happen, like what you're thinking, if you know, um, 
people that you know reached out that saw it like the premiere maybe just mm-hmm. i mean i don't know when it all went down yeah you can. no it's it's <clears throat> sorry it's uh i'm getting emotional <laughs> yeah, you <start laughs> no, you really <laughs> By the way, I used to pussy. be a, fucking every, pussy. He's the such... last <laughs> the last five pods I've been on. When I clear my throat, I just go, "What if I just start crying?" And more <laughs> often than not, it's a it's t- tied to a moment that would make sense. Um, um, <laughs> That's so funny. Are you an emotional guy? Uh yeah, m- m- much more so. Yeah, uh, I kids. mean, I always have been, but yeah, with ki- kids. Uh, you have kids? No, no, no. Just got married two weeks ago. Mazel. Thank you, dude. Right on. Yeah, That's great, dude. Um, so kids, um, probably a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's yeah that 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 was a game changer in terms of uh you know connecting with a uh with an emotional side of myself that i hadn't in, in, in prior to that but but what would make you cry prior to kids movies um yeah i would get choked up in movies yeah. for sure like, give me one um like the end of forrest gump for me every time oh forrest gump Game over. philadelphia speak of tom tom hanks basically in the 90s <laughs> <laughs> whatever came out of his mouth i would just cry <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Polar Express, <laughs> <laughs> Road to Perdition. Not an emotional film, yeah. but just the way he shot that guy. <laughs> Didn't want to do it. Yeah, uh, Big. I yeah, mean, yeah. I auditioned wow. for Big. No way. Yeah, yeah. Tom so, Hanks got the part, but uh, no, it was for for hilarious. young for young him, young young wow. him. Isn't that crazy? And I, I auditioned. They brought me back for the friend to be the friend yes. role and you know could have easily done both those isn't that what's crazy about it too yeah. right like yeah. you watch you go oh yeah i could easily... I, I have done that yeah. yeah yeah um but one of my favorite movies of all time it is big yeah oh yeah for sure real quick but, now that we're here give yeah. me just five movies oh, I, I hate so doing hard. the list but yeah, like five so you enjoy because listing a top five is crazy yeah it's so hard uh top ahead top, top, top ahead big uh city of god wow. the, Bra- the brazilian movie you know that one yes um what about uh you heard of this movie Shawshank Redemption? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Very Everyone, good. Yeah. It's great. I just feel like one every, straight to DVD is more my that. style, but <laughs> totally, yeah. 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 It's 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 underappreciated. Shawshank, it's yeah. underappreciated. Yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. American Pie presents Shawshank yeah. Redemptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's part of that series. Straight to DVD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh trying to think. Um I love the Marx Brothers. So like, I don't know, you know, Duck Soup. Wow. Probably my favorite one. Um, what about uh, God, man? I, Do you have like a is like a guilt? Fight. Like you know, some people will say like um, oh, guilty showgirls or uh, yeah, or, um, I, I not so much the oh yeah, well like the original like a bunch of Schwarzenegger stuff like Total Recall, cool, you know, like that kind of stuff. I, I will always stop on those if I'm. Meanwhile, people don't do that. You don't get to stop on shit anymore. You have to, in- everything has to be intentional, yeah. right? I mean, Netflix kind of enables, you know, whatever, the streamers, you can kind of browse and do it a li- ver- their version of it, yeah. but it's still intentional. You have to be like, I want to watch this right now. I miss like changing channels and being like, oh shit. I know. And just stopping. Catching halfway through. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Or like you go, you go once around all the channels and, and realize that it was on a commercial the last time you went through. Oh, so yeah. now you come around again and you're like, oh, it was total recall. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking Just great. Just in time for the three nipple part. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, Kindergarten but, Cops in my top. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. Probably top 25. That's great. It's, it's not, not, a, my, it's not my, a tumor. It's not a tumor. It just also, I didn't... I, it was just so different for him. Yeah. And it was, I was like, wow, he's being, I mean, Jingle All the Way, also close second. If we're talking Schwarzenegger. Phil Hartman, Jingle come, All the Way, right? Unreal. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Just got a taste of what he, he could do. Uh, I know. Film-wise. I know. Tommy Boy. Love. Sick. He, Tom, Tom, actually, Tommy Boy and Black Sheep, but Tommy Boy was a very big one with my friends. Yeah, let me think about that. So, like, my friends and I, Austin Powers. Tommy Boy, Austin Powers was a little after, yeah, like, that was, that was, right I, I after us. I was in us. the uh, zone for that. Yeah. Um, but Tommy Boy was huge for us. I'm um, trying to think what else was, uh, what else was a big quotable for us. Um, Pootie Tang. Not Pootie Tang. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh, <laughs> but, but I mean, there are movies like that, though. Yeah. I feel like that where I got my brain again. Yeah. I got to stop. <laughs> st- stop smoking weed. I feel well, actually, even if you quit, clearly it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like you're fine. Any of the Air Bud movies? Fucked, I don't know yeah. which sport. I, yeah, yeah. Stuck out with you there. That's so funny, Air Bud. They I made good so friends with Kevin Zegers, actually. <laughs> the, Is that the, who wrote? No, that he's the main dude in Air Bud. Amazing. The kid. Yeah, yeah. He's a good, good friend of mine. Are you serious? Yeah, really good friend of mine. So I jokingly reference that movie so much, and also because he'll do your podcast. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I truly—I uh, mean, as a kid, I couldn't believe that you got to be in a movie with a dog that was playing sports. Like <laughs> right. that. And then they continued. I mean, Golden Retriever or Golden Receiver? 
Classic. Yeah. Um, miss that one. I missed that one. But the baseball one after that, it was kind of like, what else can he do? And then yeah. they were like, <laughs> you really just fucking ask me that? And they brought him in. They taught him how to catch a frisbee. Um, all right. So the movie, uh, the movie comes out. Yeah. So, so I mean, there's so much from that time okay. that that is like that I can really still. Tap just into. Sit, yeah, tap into in a very visceral way, and there's you know, and there's there's music that will bring me right back. There's yeah, the soundtrack was there, unreal. Yeah, uh, well, not just for the for for the movie. Oh. I mean, songs that I'll hear that'll be like, oh, I mean, this song puts me back right before the movie came out, Whoa. and we were you know went to a screening, and then you know we were. I, I mean, there's so much crazy shit, dude. I, I just feel like that year. Prior to its release, b- between filming it and then its release that July, was was so wild to to sort of have my life. Because you were chill in between, you're just. It like- was chill, but you could. See, there was this heightened sense of like something's about to happen on the being on the precipice of something and feeling it more and more as it got closer to the release date because more things kept happening that w- that that ended up you know being a great sign like more great signs just kept happening like we i got so, I, really man i again i could have booked any of those movies yeah. i got so and you have done this so fucking lucky Oof. and like um i you know th- first they 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 tested it you know i remember getting the call from one of the producers that they did their first test screening and he was like jason I've never been part of a test screening that has performed as well as this. Like the numbers were off the charts. I was like, really? I had never done anything that had been tested before. I was like, really? What do those numbers mean? He's like, they mean th- it, it, like it's bonkers. Like it's crazy. I've never had these numbers before. I was like, oh my God, that's fucking cool. The studio was so happy with it that they changed the release date. It was supposed to be in April. Then they're like, we want to put this out in the summer. We don't do it often with just like, comedies especially comedies with no known real Fuck actors yeah. and they're like we're putting this out in fucking july we're gonna put this out in july up against wild wild west that's what we're gonna fucking do and i was like what are you kidding me that's will smith's weekend we yeah can't- yeah um i feel like he i don't <laughs> i can see into the future <laughs> i feel, I like, feel yeah. like maybe we avoid <laughs> will smith <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> um so yeah and then and then um then this was the this was the thing that I will never forget happening and being a part of and hearing the calls and just like and then interacting with people on on the streets literally and in bars about it. They put out a red band trailer. So these are in the early yes. days of the internet. Yeah. Right. I didn't even have a computer yet, like no email address, like I but people did, you know. I mean I remember in American Pie there was very famous now scene that you could obviously never get away with where we filmed Nadia undressing in my room, unbeknownst yeah. to her for yeah. the whole school. Yeah. I remember reading the script and being shocked, not that we were filming a girl naked against her will, but that there was a camera on a computer. I was like, totally. wait, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what stood out. There's yeah. a camera. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you could record shit on the, this is my, the technological advances. It was, it was literally like mind blowing. I was like, this is fucking nuts. Like this is a real thing. Yeah. Anyway, there was a red band trailer that they had released. It's basically an R-rated trailer. It's an R-rated right. trailer, and it can only be shown before R-rated movies, so, which which is hard for it, studios. Don't usually do it because it really narrows your audience in terms of who you can show the trailer to. So even an R-rated movie, you're going to cut a PG-13 or a PG trailer to get it in front of even these other movies. Kind, I, that's the idea, yeah. right? You know, you can put it in front of a PG. You're not going to put it in front of you know uh, a Toy Story. Yeah. But I mean, you can have more freedom with where you put it. And right. they made this red band trailer, and it was so shocking at the time. You know, you sit down in the theater and you see the green thing come up the following preview has been rated and then you see your and you're so used to seeing green yes. green green and then all of a sudden red comes up. now we have seen it and it's on the internet all the time it's it's, it's we're kind of anesthetized to it yeah. but at the time it was like this really big fucking deal and what they and the reason it was a red band they showed in the red band trailer uh, a quick clip of me fucking the pie which was a whole debate should we give that away should we not give it away not not me. I had no say in it. But I mean, I remember them talking about it, like the producers telling me, like, "Yeah, we're considering this." And I was like, "Doesn't that seem? Isn't that kind of like? Don't we want to keep that 
isn't that a big reveal? And ultimately, it was the smartest thing they fucking did. People, oh. first of all, remembered like seeing the red and they're like, what the fuck is this? And then they remember the pie. They were like, holy shit. And dude, I literally, this was like in the spring, I started getting recognized from the trailer. So, so now I'm like, holy shit, man. And people were talking about it online. Again, I wasn't online. Message but, boards but and chat But message rooms. boards and chat, exactly. We're starting to pop off. Exactly. Yeah, I'll exactly. speak for uh, myself. I, that scene alone, I mean, me and my buddies were just like, oh, I, we're going to see this a thousand times. Yeah. We'd never seen any movie that captured our – Again, I'm living in that time. Yeah, yeah. And and it's do and it's that. It's like I, again, like that. Even can't hardly wait, which is a great high school movie, wasn't even close. Like it just wasn't. It's almost like well, uh, where uh, when dude, it's my, like Simpsons my, Family Guy. I love yeah. Simpsons Family Guy. Came out, I was like, oh, it's that little uh, bit more yes, exactly. of the edge that you exactly. wanted. At least well, I did. In high school, and I would just I would say this like we we would say this all the time in every interview that we did r- around that time. It's like high school is not PG thirteen. My high school is R rated, right. you know. Yeah. And so this tapped into that. It gave it that extra. It's like it, it was a little almost more respectful to kids instead of going, "Oh, this is like let's clean this up and present this thing." Is this your life? Yes. This is what, and you're like, ah, kind of some of it, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, we weren't fucking pies. That's not what we yeah. connected over. Yeah. But, I'll, but but the yeah. idea of like the way we talk to each other, totally. the things we did, we're trying to get laid. Like simple idea. We're trying, you know, like the things. The, the type of relationships, the the embarrassment, the like, yes. all that shit, that that was real shit, you know? And um, That's, I love you said that to the relationships because all, all like, and we've said it a few times, but like, they were so well defined and everybody, you know, you all had your- Unique. Your, yeah, but everybody was tied somehow and had their own set of circumstances and issues. And, and I love that you said, and t- tell me this, like you were saying, like having your own- kind of separation and and lack of uh finding groups and maybe your place how much of that like were you just in the movie being like oh he's there's a, a piece of gym that's that yeah totally um and it's funny this kind of connects to that thought i think i remember bringing home the a vhs copy of the movie it was still called east great falls high having an advanced copy, bringing it home that Christmas. Went home to Jersey for, you know, two weeks. All my friends from... Co- we were all... You know, I was dropped out, obviously, but it was my my friends and what would have been my j- junior year. Mm. Um, and so everyone... I go back to Jersey. All my friends are home and I have this VHS copy. And now these guys had given me... like. I, by the way, it was, I was late to, 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 to be in the groups with them. It was more like junior year. But yeah. then I had finally found my footing and found a, a friend group. But then they all go off to college and now they're all making new friends. Yeah. I'm out in LA, although I'm finding, you know, friends in LA and stuff. But I made this movie and I would tell them and they kind of, cause I had done a lot of things when I was a kid that just never went anywhere. Right. They, Biggs, what are you doing? I'm working on this movie. Like, oh, cool. Will it come out? No, it never, you know, just never came out. So they were like, yeah, okay, you're making a movie. Cool, man. Can't, can't wait to never see it. You know, like giving me yeah. shit. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, guys, really, it's universal. Like, it's a real thing. And so I brought home a VHS copy. Awesome. And I was like, do you guys want to see this movie? And I've never been so nervous in my life, dude. Yeah, that's a bold move. It was, I, I was so nervous to shoot because I, I was so. Loved it. I, well, I so it. I was so proud of it, but I so wanted to impress them. Oh man! I was like, these are the people that I need to impress, not just because they are literally the target audience, but because these are my friends. That like, it took me a while to get in with them, and I like love them, and I want wow. them to like still like me and not think. And and I was nervous, like the it hadn't come out yet. So I didn't have yet, like, whatever you guys think, doesn't matter. This is, um, I'm a fucking millionaire now, yeah. and this is a massive hit, yeah. and I'm going to do four more of these, yeah. so fuck off. Yeah. I didn't have any of that. This was like, oh, God, I know there's great buzz around it. Things are all going well, but this still could be a giant flop. Critics, who knows? Like, yeah. this could actually be a giant turd. Maybe I'm just totally wrong, and this could actually, maybe uh, maybe my career is ruined because I fucking fucked this. Pot. Like, these were all still thoughts. That I love I was that you're having. saying that, by the way, real quick, because that is for people that aren't in the business that are listening. Like, that is, as much as you were saying, it was testing through the roof and all these it doesn't things. doesn't matter. And your reps are fired up on it. Like, until it comes out yeah. and the audience yeah, yeah, speaks, yeah. right? 
Yep, a hundred percent. So you were not wrong to be thinking a little bit in panic mode. Panic mode, yeah, totally. All the right, all the signs, all they're all there. It's all every step that's happening is is going great. But this was like for me going to be a very big moment. Do will my fr- do my friends like it? Will they find this funny? And um, and I showed it to them. Oh, Friday was a movie that we quoted all the time. Awesome. I remember, because now I'm putting myself back in Eric Summer Baking's basement. We were all there. It was like Chris, it was like, you know, December 21st or whatever it was. And we're all there in Eric's basement. It's all my friends, girls and guys. And we're there where we would watch Friday, you know, on a loop. Awesome. Um, and I put in this VHS tape. And first scene, right out of the gate, I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And they start, they start laughing. I'm like, but it's it's like laughing, but also just like they're still kind of processing. It's weird to see me playing this case. Like there's still stuff you could tell that's kind of like they're not they haven't fully let go, right? Like to watch it as just sure. a movie. It's hard. And I'm understanding that, but it's also I'm still like nervous mostly for the pie scene. That's what I'm like, is this you know, I literally, I was legitimately concerned that if the movie didn't work, that I was going to potentially look like an asshole for fucking this pie. Um, it, by the way, yeah, make or break that right? scene. I, I mean, was like, inevitably, uh, yeah. In make. hindsight, though, even if the movie did break, like if it was a break, I, it's 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 more on the directors than anything. I feel like, um, but who, uh, who knows, dude? I don't know. I could. Yeah. So uh, the pie scene came and. When the first shot of me standing up against the counter with my dick in the pie and my pants down around my ankles, there was this pause. And then Matthew and Janito was the first to just bust out in a guttural awesome. laugh. And everyone followed suit. And I was like, I, I don't think I've ever felt relief like that. Wow. And I remember, and it was that moment that I was like, I think it's going to be a hit. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's unbelievable. Still not 100% sure. Still not knowing. Still, you know, thought I had my big break on Broadway. Ha- thought I had it doing Drexel's class for Fox in 1991 and saw that shit go away. So it was still really like, okay, let, let's just wait. Let's, who knows, you know, like this could be it. But I thought other things were it. And, it, and they weren't. You know, which was also why I'm so grateful for the career that I had as a kid. Yeah. But, um, so you guys go to the premiere, it comes out. Go to the premiere, sat next to my parents, sat next to my mom at the premiere, watching me fuck a pie. (laughs) Um, had, which by the way, your commitment to that, so many things. You're a great physical, uh, comedic actor. Um, and, uh, that's another thing I wanted to make sure to mention, which is just, and also fearless, Thank you. which you gotta be. Yeah. Even when I, I saw some clip on Ellen where it was showing you, I think an audition, you did a fake audition for Magic Mike or was that a real audition? Yeah. No, it was fake audition. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but he like, so funny. Yeah. And then the bit you <laughs> Thanks, did on the man. show, like, like just fearless like that, which is, uh, again, just, I feel like if, you know, there's all commitment, man, you gotta, yeah, yeah you gotta fully, it. you gotta believe your own shit. You know, it's like, that you gotta, scene doesn't work if you're not fully committed. hundred percent. hundred percent. And by the way, rewind literally two hours before I shot that pie scene where I was 110% committed. Two hours before that, I was calling my manager in my dressing room, freaking out, going, I'm about to do the pie scene. Like, should I be nervous? Like, is this, is this really like, <laughs> is, this, yes this. is this crazy? Yeah. Like, yeah. Am I, am I crazy? Like I read this and was like, oh, I can't wait to do this. Weird. But now it's here and I'm like, am I really doing it? And I know it's a universal movie, but still, what if it is just, you know, still all, and again, this is before I was on Zoloft and, <laughs> and, and you know, the cocktail of drugs that I'm on now. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just, I would spin, I would spin. And he's like, literally, he goes, you go in there and you fuck that pie with all you got. I was like, <laughs> okay. Greatest okay. advice great, ever. Great, great advice. And uh, yeah, and I did. And I did. Wait, he, did the crew laugh? And that was the other thing. The crew laughed. Awesome. When we, when the, after the first take and cut, you know, the director said cut, crew bust out laughing. So that was another, huge again, relief. all huge relief, huge relief. But then still, all these steps through, through that year, like, is it gonna, but it just became more and more clear as it got closer and closer. Then we do the press junket, you know, two weeks before the movie comes out or three weeks, whatever it is. And it's like all these outlets are there and they're like, you know, because every single one of them, this, did you get, you know, was it too much pie talk or were you just like, I'm happy to? Oh, I was so psyched to t- talk yeah, about it. Great. Just because it was like, oh my, because everyone that interviewed us it was at the Bing Crosby estate in uh, Toluca Lake. Mm. I'll never forget it. And like, you know, uh, and they, they, we did it in the backyard and it was set up like a big pool party cool. and all this stuff. And, um, 
And every person that came in, you know, Channel 2 Minnesota or Entertainment Tonight, some of the big ones, and then there were like regional ones. Yeah. Every single person that came in had just seen the movie, their press, you know, had a press screening, and they were like, oh my God, this is so funny. Like, this is, and, you know, people would literally say to us, like, your life's about to change. And, you know, it landed. I was like, I think you, you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. I remember my, my, my best friend he went to dinner with him, uh, and, and, uh, and his family in San Diego. We were down visiting. They were, the parents were still living in SD and we were down there. And I was telling her the story. She hadn't even seen the movie, but she had heard enough about it. She's like, your, your life is about to change. This was like a week before the movie came out. And so that, that night of the premiere was actually crazy. I couldn't even stay for the party because I was on a red eye with Allison Hannigan to go do Letterman the next day. Like, that's how, like, my life just went, been, like, it was crazy. Uh, doing the talk show. Well, first of all, you're, Parents sit next to you at the premiere. Loved yeah. it? Yeah, loved it. I had actually shown them that same VHS copy okay, that cool. same week that I was home for Christmas, Good but move. I could not watch it with them. I was I was like, I think I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah. I, I stayed downstairs and listened for their laughing, and they loved it. My dad especially. Awesome. Loved it. So proud. Loved it. So proud. Did they have the same type of like, I mean, being removed from the business, like you said, being blue collar, just not having... Were they like this is going to be great, or were they just like we liked it? So good luck. I hope it works out. The the latter. Yeah, the latter. They're like this. This is fucking. You know, they, we love this. You're hilarious. This is great. You know, but they, yeah, they're they're they were just enough removed where, you know, they they once they started for them it was like oh I was I did an interview for the Bergen Record which mm. is the local paper you know like that was. You know, this, the paper that they would read every yeah. weekend. Oh, my God. I mean, that. That's a big deal. That was like, oh. That was bigger than Letterman. <laughs> yeah, ex- 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So that kind of shit started happening. And it was like, oh, my God, this is kind of taken off. I got recognized, like, the weekend the movie came out, I was crossing the street, and someone in a car drove by and was st- rolled down the window, stopped, and was like, do the dance, do the dance. Like Iconic, sh- yeah. Yeah, shit like that just started happening. Overnight. Overnight. Overnight again because it crushed in box office, right? To, yeah, started to get recognized from the Red Band trailer a little bit, but again, isolated. You know, kind of like yeah, not a lot. As soon as the movie came out, anywhere I went, anywhere I went, and it's been like that since that day. Fuck yeah, dude! Which is wild. I mean, literally, my wife is still surprised by it. Like, like well, this yeah, because this it's is, rare this isn't a, a movie boast. This isn't a, time, and this dude. is not a boast, although I am certainly proud yes. but it is it, i i have now 25 years since you know whatever since 24 since the movie came out i've had a lot of time to to be this person yeah. in the world that gets this uh you know feedback yeah um but i've also had a lot of time to think on it and reflect on it and it is wild dude the 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 impact that the movie has made and the and the people that have seen it i took a vacation to fiji <laughs> Oh my god! And we were in a we were in a private, basically a private island. There was one resort on the island, and then there was a village of of yeah. local indigenous people. And part of the resorts thing, maybe you know, you know, all these rich people that you know came to the resort to yes. stay in these private villas, they would feel better about themselves. The hotel would arrange these private tours to go see the villagers and say hello and like whatever it was. Yes. And they took you know me and my, my girlfriend at the time. They took us uh, you know into the village. And the, they, everyone started freaking out. This is a remote island in the, in Fiji, um, middle of the South Pacific. They, no TVs, no nothing. They would, they had one TV that the owner of the hotel, like, let them have that they would play VHS tapes, like, once or twice a month. They would get a, a movie, you know, bring it in, and everyone would sit in the middle of the village, and they would plug this in, and they would watch a movie. One of those movies was American Pie. And then I come to this island, and they're, like, freaking the fuck out. Shit like that. Like, I'll be wherever, hat, sunglasses, and Jenny's like, I, I, Jenny's like, how did you just get recognized? I don't even recognize you. Beard. What else? And someone would be like, yeah, you know, and it's not always like, hey, Jason Biggs. I mean, it could just be like, are you, I know you from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a, it's a constant anywhere I go. Wow, dude. It's wild, dude. It's wild. And it's because of that fucking movie. Uh, did you guys know the cast when you're watching the premiere? Did you look around and kind of be like, all right, like, are we all buying like hot tubs together? <laughs> or like, or did you know also like, we're probably going to make three or four of these. Or, or do you not get ahead of yourself? Yeah, no, we. I don't remember thinking that stuff. It was more 
Enjoy this first one. See what happens. Enjoy this first one. For me, the stuff that I, for me personally, and actually some of the other actors, we were already like getting our next gigs. Gotcha. That 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 was the thing that was like gotcha. wild. We're yeah. like, holy shit, this movie. Now getting offers and just we're now like, yeah. I mean, just, so, or uh, auditioning, whatever it was, but we're still we're we're like now we're all of a sudden like oh the ca- phones ring in we're this is kind of incredible like holy shit and the excuse me the movie did so well like that first weekend it was up against Wild Wild West it beat it um, wow. the second weekend Eyes Wide Shut came out we dropped down to two Eyes Wide Shut opened number one our third weekend Eyes Wide Shut second weekend we go back to number one wow it was wild. It was absolutely like just. What was the cra- you said? Phone was ringing. Did what were some of? I'm always curious. Like the craziest, like out of the woodworks. Whether it's an old math teacher or a, a drama teacher, or that that uh, was the most um, like sweet, but also mm-hmm. I don't know some some jock that you were kind of friends with, or somebody that was you know that uh, that reached out or that you. Um... I, I yeah. I don't know, you know, I don't really have the, a cousin, like a, like a f- distant cousin I sure. had, you know, and, uh, you can, you know, kind of like ask for money and do that. But, uh, but, but, but I didn't, fortunately, I haven't really had too much of that, even over the course of my career career whole career like i haven't had too much of like the people coming out of the woodwork i think partly but, I, mean, is, I mean i mean i was never like a re- positive way too. yeah yeah, yeah. Like and, a teacher being a, like yeah even in a positive way i just i don't think i was very uh, reachable as well like i had moved oh, out yeah, to yeah. la i had a new cell phone I, I i would hear like from my mom so my mom would call and be like i ran into mrs schneeweiss in uh <laughs> yeah, in Shoprite. Yeah. yeah you know in the in the you know in the uh produce section and she was could not believe she just she sends her love she's so proud of wow, you know? cool. so i would hear that a lot and it was it was amazing and then, letters from fans yeah but i i i, I kind of had like a um i ended up doing like a service mm. that that was like a, a fan mail service yeah. that would send pictures back yeah, for me because i I've also like my i don't want my address it, all that stuff was the first for me i was just like well what i don't I even know how to yeah, d- fuck. deal with all this there's no fame school there definitely is not. There definitely is not. It was a trip, man. You just kind of le- learn as you go. Um, but it was fu- I definitely enjoyed it. Like, I definitely was able to be in the moment. Like, I don't sit here now at 44 going, ah, I wish I, fuck, I wish I appreciated it. You know, yeah. I didn't really, I didn't fully get it or understand it. I got it. I was like, I was learning as I went. I didn't know how to do all the things, but I got it. I was like, this is a special crazy thing oh many times jokingly and uh with all seriousness to the next step. to the next step dude <laughs> i've done it when i'm trying to do a cheers and i can and i always say this every time i do a cheers i go god i need to fucking remember uh like a good one or like google a good and there's people that i've been in circles with that have like some like to the blah blah blah, 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 blah and it's some long thing that ends up being really racist somehow at the end but it rhymes so you're like all right wasn't yeah, that bad whatever yeah and then uh but then if i can't think of something quick i fucking do the next step and everybody does it everybody, and everybody oh, goes that's amazing and everybody just goes fucking couldn't have done it better that's amazing i oh, love yeah. hearing that shit that's so cool i'll tell you what i yeah <laughs> i'm guilty of actually quoting my own movie good like i was I've gonna done, ask like i've 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 done it where i've been in a crowd of people and someone was telling me a story and it's like this one time and i go so one time at band camp and oh. like Oh, they whoa. were like, "What the fuck whoa, is happening?" Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> um, that's cool. Yeah, but then you know, I but then I but I've also you know I've heard it all, man. And like you know, m- for the most part, my interactions with fans are really positive and great. Especially in New York, people are very. I, I love New York. Like people will walk by me and just be like, "Hey, what's up, like, dude? Great stuff," and just keep walking. Awesome. Everyone's got other shit to do. They have their own shit to worry that's about. It's nice that everyone's just kind of moving and shaking. Yeah, they're not going to stop and be yeah. like, "Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. how yeah. can you help me?" You know, yeah. in LA for me, it's, you know, it's, it's it was just a di- you know, fame is the currency. Yeah. You know, it's a it's it's a great pl- I lived there for a long time. I loved it. It, it it's just now at this point in my life, it's just I need to be here, but um but but you know, there are still times where I'll get the guy, yeah. he's always a guy. Yeah. Who's like who drops the thing on me, whether it's a pie thing or you know quotes something and expect you know has this expectation for me to be like, you know, for him it's the first time, right? You have to remember that. <laughs> you know, well, I'm sure like Letterman and those guys, right? They probably all did a little bit of 
some sort of a joke based uh, of around course, that, right? Of course, right? of course. Great. Oh, I remember uh, one of the other. I rem- uh, again, there's like so many of these things around that time. But I remember when Jay Leno, um, again, really before the internet, but Jay Leno made a comment joke in his opening monologue about the kid that fucked the pie. You know. And I remember thinking, I, go. I didn't see it live. Oh, the movie out there, the movie uh, right now, the movie at uh, the guy, the high school kid. We were in high school, right? Kevin, you remember in high school? He was very uh, hard, he was hard. He had a boner. He, was, uh, he didn't have a woman in his basement, a woman in the house. He didn't know many girls. So he's like, well, well I can we'll get a pie. Kevin, you having a pie? Yeah, <laughs> the boys and berry. He went to boys and berry pie, some sort of pie. And then, uh, so he pulled his band down and he, uh, he fucked the pie. And I was like, oh, that's a, that's a fun Tuesday. <laughs> the Google Dolls are here. We'll be right back with headlines. Something like that, right? Or something like that. Well done, man. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome for the uh, for the assist, <laughs> yeah, by the way. I was Wait. like, I could just see it in his eyes. He really wants to do his <laughs> Leno impression for me. Let me just fucking Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank um, you for paying. That was that was money. Uh Wait, so But that... like I remember hearing I didn't watch it, but I remember hearing someone was like, dude, you were on Leno last night. I was like, What? They're like, no, 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 David Leno, he was in the monologue. I was like, that's fucking wild. In the pop culture. Yeah, that's fucking wild. Yeah, like, that's shit crazy. like that just kept happening. I was like, what? And then a couple weeks later, Leno wanted me to be on the show. And I come in and I do Leno. I was like, what the Did fuck? Did you enjoy those? You crushed I them. I loved them. I loved them. My last Letterman is still like, it's, it's, if I think about it, I cringe and I feel awful. And it's like, I did Letterman for, the first three American Pie films. Went on the first one. It was the first one I ever did. My first fucking talk show was Letterman. I told you I left from the premiere. I couldn't stay for the party. My family stayed for the party. I got on a red eye and flew to New York and to do Letterman that next day. And I was so nervous. Terrified. I mean, come on. Absolutely terrified. And what they tell you about, you know, he keeps it negative 10 degrees. I mean, I was just like, it was so, I was shaking. And I went out there and I did from what I remember yeah. well. Yeah. You know, I remember coming off going, oh, fuck. And he liked me ostensibly yeah, by all accounts. And you know, he asked me, but I did it for American Pie 2. And then I did it for American Pie 3. And by American Pie 3, I went out there and I had to remember doing the pre-interview and I thought I had a funny bit. <laughs> um, I love that you were thinking of bits though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought I had a little funny anecdote about my parents' above ground pool uh, and how they had a deck around it, and the deck kind of fools the above ground pool into yes. thinking it's an in ground pool, yes. and uh, did it, and and he didn't la- he didn't he didn't take the he didn't do, he couldn't even save me he didn't try to save oh. it was just like a bad all around but but the interview actually started bad and I think he he just it never recovered from the moment I walked out so I walk out and I take a seat and Dave I you know I didn't realize the camera wasn't on him. When this was happening, but I'm like walking out, I shake his hand and I, and I like take my seat and he's kind of like looking under his seat for something. He's like not paying attention to me, right? He's like kind of doing one of these and I'm thinking everyone's seeing this. I yeah. don't know if he dropped something or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I, so I'm like sitting there and, and I said something. I, obviously we could find it, but I, I don't know. I'd like to think it was something funny, like oh, drop your keys, lost the contact <laughs> or something, but it was something, whatever, a, a not funny version of that. But something to that effect. And he just looked at me, just oh, like kind of stared like, oh God. <laughs> like he thought I was like, fu- like I was trying to like fuck with it. Like, oh, would you, you know, like, or, or maybe it was even something like, oh, hello, I'm over here. Like whatever it was. Oh, yeah. Thinking, Didn't uh, play. Did not play. And there was no recovery. Oh, no. And there was absolutely no recovering and never got asked back. <laughs> and, I, oh. and maybe it's a coincidence. Yeah. But it's probably not. <laughs> Holy shit. It was probably not. And I remember, and then he retired, and I was like, oh, I'll never yeah. redeem myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, um. But, but yeah, dude, it was a, it was a wild fucking time, and I have, uh, crazy appreciation for it. And there was, you know, there was a period where, you know, we all, all the actors in the movie were like, oh, we gotta, you know, try to do something else. But then it's like, we have the most fun doing those movies. I was just gonna say. It's the most financially rewarding. Every time they came to you, yeah, totally, right? I every, mean, come on. Every time they came to you, was it excitement of like, yeah. we're gonna do another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also yeah. brilliant that every time was a completely different story yeah. that, we all, because we're investing in the characters, immediately on board with. Right. Yeah, right. Reunion, awesome. Wedding, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, and you, and also the timing was great. You see some movies, like the Entourage one, for example, I feel like it was just like a little bit, also we're in a different time. But it was but too late. You can wait too long, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I feel like you, they they did it right with yeah. uh, with those. Yeah, um, yeah. The kiss, the best kiss with you and Sean was the <laughs> yeah. third one, right? That was the two. The second one. That yeah. was the second one, yeah. I mean, that to me, I mean, a lot of great set pieces again. I mean- 
but uh, and that was great too. What you set up with so many callbacks with the first one, with so many storylines, and yep. then yep. And again the relationships yep. and and um, but yeah, that the, the kiss was you all you all appreciate this. I, I again, I'm a comedy nerd and I can talk about this shit ad nauseum. But yes. but the kiss scene, if you like that scene, one tidbit from that was that the take that's in the movie. <laughs> uh, we're kissing and I improvised just p- bringing my hand up to his face yes. and he just right away Sean just just played a lot and just smacked my hand away <laughs> and it's that's in the movie they kept it. and they kept it yeah it's just like there's so much like, bro I, that's so funny because it's all like that's so funny that like, because you're you're doing this to just to get the girls, but to... then I'm in, I'm invested enough to where I'm gonna like <laughs> not necessary. I, like maybe it's force a habit, or I just feel like oh, this is what you're supposed to do when you're making out, and, and you're so just, like, conducive to the character totally. to be like I'm just I'm trying to be I'm, make, I'm trying to make it as passionate and as <laughs> I'm gonna sell it. I I'm gotta sell it. Sell it. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. And he smacked it away. It was great. It was great. Um, and then it was just a matter of keeping a straight face. Yeah, dude. That was often the the challenge. But anyway. Uh, um, well, we're gonna have to do a part two at some point. Yeah, man. And also, you know, hopefully uh next time new- you stalk me in New York, uh you Bro, can- new homie, I'm gonna be back out here for for shows, uh, and you gotta come and, and we'll we'll kick it in. I feel like you did and I, I appreciate all the kind words and yeah, I, I but I really have to tell you, I am a big fan. I mean oh, I, thanks, man. I I'm I'm really happy to be here. I'm flattered you asked me to do your podcast. All your nice words to me, I, I really take to heart and I appreciate it. You're really fucking funny. Thanks, man. You're you're really funny and I and I, you know, I can't. I just can't wait to see what's up oh, with thanks, you. I know man. you're getting a lot of cool parts and a lot of cool stuffs on the horizon, man. It's awesome. I'm actually. Uh, qu- well, this you're will quitting. be the last. You're thing. Quitting. I'm quitting. Yeah. I'm going to move to yeah. Shanghai. You told my teach, mom. Uh, you told my mom <laughs> in the minivan already. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have similar uh, moms as far as. Um, well, I had a, a mom minivan. Uh, you know, extravaganza. Just, but the the amount of. I mean, she was that for me by her single mom. And just the the driving around and the taking you know jobs and weird hours just to like make all that work. So yep, yep. Um, shout out to the moms. Yeah, for real. For um, real. All right, so we're gonna close this out uh, with a quick little uh, inside the actor studio ten question questionnaire. I'm gonna okay. play James Lipton, R.I.P. Uh, to to Mr. Lipton, and we want to um, get to know Jason Biggs a little bit better. I'm gonna play Lipton, and we'll close this out uh, with these ten questions. By the way, real quick, how does Jason Biggs unwind? Movies, walks, yeah, sports. walk a lot. I walk here. I'll walk home. Um, I'll yeah, get you an Uber. Black, yeah, for real. SUV, for real. Yeah, I yeah. Couldn't possibly. One thousand percent. No, done. It's all right. No, no. I do want to walk. Actually, okay, good. Thank you. It's so nice. I love this weather. Uh, I like yeah. to. Yeah, I walk. I bike ride. I love, love biking. Um, you know that kind of shit. I like. Uh, I like, you know, I've been doing a lot of, I'm sober now. Sorry, sorry. Pick it up. So, I don't yeah. know why, if it rang once, you would sh- <laughs> shut the ringer off now. You're in the middle of a fucking podcast. I like that you got Idiot. classic, the old school ring though. Stupid. Is that old school? I don't even know. I feel like it. Really? It makes sense. I have a Yahoo email, so I definitely hold on to the nice. past. Yeah. I love it. By the way, we just talked about my glory days. This is like, <laughs> this is right up my alley, bro. I have a Yahoo email address. I listen to Pop Rocks on Sirius XM. Fuck yeah. 90s on 9. This, my wife like makes fun. She's like, you know, it's not fucking 99 anymore anymore like the honey, 90s will always be the greatest the 90s late 90s early aughts were my fucking jam johnny resnick the google dolls yeah a good friend of mine just played my wedding come on flew in to play three songs iris was her first dance and come, on. come on man sick yeah. dude That's and i heard sick. you say dave matthews man was the first concert yeah. everyone to yeah i mean probably been to fit i mean yeah the best love 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 uh last concert you went to Last concert oh this was great i saw red hot chili peppers at the apollo holy shit which was Sick. Were they unbelievable? Unbelievable. Flea is just, I, I mean, know, and dude. Keita. I mean, all of them. Chad Smith. They're, um, it was, it was my, and we were in like the fourth row at the Apollo. Yeah. I mean, honestly, dude, the, the like, I sometimes I pinch myself. Like, I, I don't take any of this shit for granted. When you go to things like that, then will you try to, you're like, you know, maybe someone can put in a word to maybe go back and say what up? <laughs> that, be, that was already a major hookup, cool. like through the, you know, okay. like, and most of the people, I mean, John McEnroe was sitting right behind me. Like, awesome. there were people everywhere. So, like, and I, no one had mentioned backstage, and I just, I was like, 
I'm not going to try. This isn't it. The, the fact it. that I'm here, I used my fame to get into this seat. Cool. This is cool. cool. This is cool. But like Dave Matthews Band, I would go to their concerts all the time when I was younger. And I started by like, well, you know, the movie came out and then I would call my manager or publicist and be Come like, on. hey, can I get a... Yes. And they'd be like, yeah, you got it. Uh, we got you whatever row and uh, backstage passes. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I became friends with the band. And now I'm actually really good friends with the bassist. And so now I go just to like hang out. I don't even listen to their music much anymore. Unbelievable. I'm just like, I go and hang out. They're coming on Friday. I'm just like going to go and like, you know, hang, hang out in his bus and chill and say hi to him. I mean, you know? that's unbelievable. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Yeah. It's like weird how, you know, I started as a fucking fan and he knows that. I'm like, it's weird you're still friends with me, bro. You know, I like fucking <laughs> like was obsessed with you guys. That's a crazy story with him being in that band so early. Like 16. To quit. What do you say? He said, I think he told his music teacher he was yeah. quitting uh, school to join a band and yeah. then a guy being like, this is the wrong move. But he's like, well, I'm doing what I'm trying to do. I'm exactly. just going to do it now. Yep. But isn't that wild? And it just goes to show you, like, not that I'm trying to get all, uh, you know, heady with this, but like, fucking, you know, nobody Follow, knows. Do it. Follow Whatever, it. like. Yeah. Go after it, man. Go after it. Do you try it. to instill, uh, and then I'll wrap this up, mm -hmm. with your kids now, like, how much are you um, trying to kind of give them just, like, the playbook and be like, call whatever plays you want, or are you mm -hmm. trying to, you know, lay down the hammer and be like, look, I know from me being a kid what is coming your way so i want to get ahead of it and yeah, yeah. lay down the hammer dude that's a big question that really like my wife and i tackle all the time i i like to think it's the former that we're that i'm really not trying to we we are not trying to put our feet down we're really trying to like like you said that's a good way of putting it give them the playbook and let them discover mm. and they have been and they have been they're they're telling us who they are you know we we every day is like oh this is okay we we're kind of following their them a bit but but it's tricky man raising kids now it's like there's so much stuff to worry about there's so much stuff and there's like and you know it, it's complicated man global pandemic i can imagine being say you know I, I don't know there's the, I, I have all different kinds of concerns when it comes to my kids i mean i didn't grow up with money so like my kids are growing up in a yeah. in a well off family yeah. and i don't you know and i'm struggle like how to parent in that world in new york city you know it's it's you know and i it's it's just it's tricky because i don't want to like i've worked for this like this is I want to, to be of, I want right? to take care yeah. of them yeah. and I want to obviously give them the world. Yeah. But you have to also be careful. You are shaping every fucking thought in oh their little God. in their little porous heads right now. <laughs> right? And it's like it's just it's just w wild. And then add to that like I'll get recognized with my kids and you know what does that do to them? It's totally. like all, all kinds of shit. Fuck it's complicated, it. man. It's really complicated. But honestly, like that's for me, I'm I'm yeah, I, I'm so grateful for American Pie because it allows me to be here for them yeah. when I need to be yeah. and want to be, and I don't have to take the job just to leave because I I know I'm being an actor is hard and a stand up is hard, man. Yeah. The travel is hard, all of it is really hard, and not a day goes by where I'm I'm like don't count my blessings for being able to be like you know what I think I'm gonna not take this gig because I want to be here for the kids for you know. Um, I heard you anyway. Say, I digress. Well, no, I heard you say too, and your wife sounds like a sweetheart. You mentioning in a few interviews about how hard of a team you guys uh, are mm -hmm. with everything and how the the kids really like amp that up, which totally. uh, got me fired up to hear yeah, that. Yeah, because you, like you said, I think too, like it can go, it can kind of bring it together, or it can kind of be something that yep, kind of yep. separates you. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right, here we go. I'm all James right. Lipton. Here we I'm go. Jason Biggs. <clears throat> Welcome back. I'm here with Jason Biggs. <laughs> Jason, what is your favorite word? Moist. Perfect. Use it in a sentence. Uh, my back <laughs> <laughs> is very moist <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> it is warm in here. What is your least favorite word? Moist. <laughs> no. Uh and these can be funny or real answers. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah, no, for I'm any. trying to think. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to trying to think of a, a real one. Um, there's a word I always have trouble pronouncing. That's like an easy word, and it's um. Oh, Google. <laughs> yeah. I use it 20 times a day. Uh, the word and the actual site, but yeah. I sometimes a Google. It comes out weird in the back. The it doesn't roll yeah. off the tongue, and it comes out of my mouth weird for some reason. It's Google. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like maybe they should have been most of our first words as babies. Yeah, well, that, it was my kids' first. Words. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know what my kid's first words was, to be honest. I have no idea. Great timing, great answer. Yeah, I wasn't around. Uh, what turns you on? Uh, laughing. Yes. Laughing, laughing. I've been so hot. I've had a hard on under this table the entire, <laughs> especially the Jay That's Leno how it's bit. staying up right the, now, by the, the way. The Jay Leno bit? Yeah, there's no legs on this table. Uh, but like, yeah, when my wife makes me laugh, she's so funny. When really? she makes me laugh, it's so hot. Huge. I fucking love it. I it's love it. time? Yeah, man. If there's not that, at least for me, I'm, and I'm sure you can attest to it, like, yeah, if you can't have that back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. The, the back and forth is like and being and as someone that makes you laugh. Like yeah. I've definitely been in relationships where it's just like a one side of street. Yeah, and you're like, well, you definitely yeah. fill my ego because you're laughing at C material. Yep. But I want the that's you know. only going to get me so far. I totally. like it. I'm going to keep you around for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, I think but I'm, there's a chance yeah, you're going to yeah. bang my best friend from high school. <laughs> True story. Um, all right. <laughs> what what is your what is your favorite curse word? Cunt. Great word. So hard. The hard C is just so good. We shot... Uh, I wish... You know, sometimes I wish I was English because I, I'm jealous how they can use it. Like, you know... Oh, an Australian. An Australian. Yeah. I'm jealous with the, the frequency uh, with which they can use it and not get into And it just be a thing. I fucking cunt. You I, know? I love I love great... the accent, but I love how they... I, you know, we say cunt here. It's like a... It's a... Whoa, yeah, it's whoa, derogatory. Screech. I wish it was part... I wish it was it had a more positive kind of I, I agree. I agree. I got an Uber in Australia. I didn't know they uh, used it as um, uh, frequently and like just with so much. It was just, you know, it was a casual term of endearment. And... Uh, and so I get out, and the guy was, you know, he was t- talking. He was listening to comedy. So I was like, "Oh, who do you like? Whatever." And then he was like, "So he was dropping me off at a comedy club." And and so he he goes, "I get out," and he goes, "All right, have a good show, you cunt." <laughs> and I go, "I go, gotta be honest, man. Look, you're looking at two to three stars." <laughs> Didn't know. And then he goes, "He goes, no, no, no." He goes, "Cunt," you know, and he had to explain it to me. And then I go, "My five bad." Stars, five, stars, yeah. five stars. Five stars. <laughs> five stars. Sorry, very funny. Sorry. Um, uh, what uh, what sound or noise do you love? What sound or noise do I love? Um. My little guy, when he snores a little bit, he, he whoa, little, he cute kid snore, cute cute kid snore for a couple of reasons. It's cute, sounds cute, and it also means oh, fuck, they're asleep. <laughs> you know? Wow, yeah, yeah. It's like a, on a few levels, it's like that is yeah. a true sigh of relief, yeah, and just weight lifted. Yeah, yeah, they're finally asleep. It's such a good feeling. What sound or noise do you hate? Uh, the uh, when a battery dies in the smoke alarm, and the chirping. Oh God. Do you fix it or do you take it out and leave it and duct tape the? Usually, take it out and leave it. Oh, you're. We li- and b- by the way, this is one of the reasons I love living in New York because I could like call up the super and be like, "Dude, my you gotta please come in and it's torture." But yeah, when I was living in LA, if a battery went on a smoke alarm, it was just like I yeah I I, 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 I just smash it smash yeah. it with the broomstick or <laughs> it's fucking yeah. Are you handy? Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Either. Not really. I was going to make a masturbation joke there. Couldn't think of one. <laughs> Decided to give you the real. No, not handy at all. <laughs> not handy at all. Not everything's a joke. Man. Not everything's a joke. I know. You're right. You got no. it. You know, the most that. important part of comedy is knowing when not to joke. You know? I, yeah. I subscribe to everything. Should be. I it was in a relationship with uh, someone who was just, who said that to me at one point. Just, is everything. Is, is everything, everything a joke? I was just like. It can be. It should be. It should be. We're breaking up. <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> I don't want to be with you anymore, cunt. Is that funny? <laughs> get it because it's not a joke yeah. oh. get the fuck out of my house <laughs> were you there <laughs> sounds like you were reading from the transcript of what do you what mean it's the worst transpired. I've ever been broken up with it was <laughs> have you been broken up with uh, yeah 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 Me yeah, too. yeah. Not, I mean not so much like a hard you know like this is we're done yeah. but more like a, a, a you know I thought it was still ha- like kind of more yeah. sort of earlier stages where yeah. it just kind of like fizzled and I and you know liked at the time played it like oh yeah we just that you know it was my I just we just stopped yeah. saying it just kind of fizzled <laughs> out but really it was like oh she drifted oh she stopped picking up the phone yeah. like got it okay <laughs> oh yeah, yeah there's uh there's uh okay what profession other than your own would you like to attempt uh, psychologist. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're very thoughtful. I just, I like, you know, I've, I, yeah, yeah. I was a psych major for three weeks cool. at Montclair State University. Shout out. <laughs> Before shout, Little bulldog shout out. Who are they? I don't know. I have no idea, but the bulldogs. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I, I, I did, yeah, I like it. Cool. I, I, you know, fascinated. 
I just, I, you know, a, as an actor, right? You get, you know, totally. you, ideally, you start, you're like, how, how does, why? Um, not that I ever really, I'm not an overthinker method person at, not. at, at all. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm much more technical. Like, how does this sound real or how does this sound funny? Mm. Um, but for better and for worse. But, um, but I do, you know, have played characters and do watch movies, a lot of movies where I'm like, oh, what is the, you know, what is that like? But also, you know, I've just been through it. I've been therapy. I'm, you know, I've, I've had my own shit and it's yeah. like, oh, this is kind of fascinating how, why my mind works this way. Totally. Yeah. You know? And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. There is, um, and, ha- and understanding like the method to the madness behind each person. Just, yeah. I don't know what like drives well, certain and thoughts si- and how you're, and you sympathize more, I think, and empathize. 1, like, like you know, if I know the back, or even if I just stop and say, "There's probably a backstory here," yeah. it makes you much more forgiving of people. It makes you much more. It's just easier to move through the world for me, like knowing that everyone's got a backstory. Everyone's got Give shit. The benefit of the doubt. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Undervalued. A hundred percent. Yeah. Da, na, na, na. Remember those? <laughs> oh yeah. Bring those back. The more you like, David Schumer being like, you know, kids can read. <laughs> you know, you, every, uh, that's not. A, I don't know who that was, but yeah. That's uh, all right. Uh, two more questions. Well, what profession would you not like to do? Oh man. Uh, oh man. <laughs> Actor. <laughs> Great, great answer. I mean, shit. Like, yeah, I, I love it so much, but it is a crazy ass career, man. It yeah. is like, you know, people with kids a lot of time. You know, should I put my kid in that? I'm like, dude. First of all, no, not as a kid. Yeah. I yes, I did it. I, I don't. Re- I'm grateful. It made me an outlier by the time I was 20. But but no, yeah. don't make your kid an actor. Yeah. But also, even like adults, so, you know, it's like I don't have advice, man. I don't know. I don't know what the, what it is this is an absolutely absurd career choice and most of the time it's really hard and difficult and even me with the success that i've had there are times where i can get really down on myself and feel very vulnerable and go in and get horrible feedback and whatever it is and it's like you really put yourself out there in a way that is not necessarily healthy all the yeah. time and it's fucking hard yeah it's hard um when it's good, it's fantastic. Yeah. When it's bad, it really sucks, man. Yeah. It's really like it existential is... crisis overload. I've had a few of those in my life. But, you know, I love it and I hate it, you know? Which I feel like is healthy. And that yeah. should, I mean, any like who respect, loves yeah. what they're doing, like, full, like, I mean, I feel the same way about stand-up, man. Well, There's for me, highs and lows and you just, you know. I bet when you're on stage, you always love it. Oh, yeah. When you're on a set, you always love it. It's the, it's, what people don't realize is be, being a stand up and being an actor is the in between for me, especially like, cause I'm not a stand up. So I can't like, oh, I want to go play a club. Like, I don't have the thing where I can just go and act. Right. So there's a lot of Whoa. not act. Most yes. of my life as an actor has been spent not acting. Yes. Wow. When I'm acting, I fucking love it. I'm yeah. having the best fucking yeah, time. Yeah. But as a job choice, most of my time in my life is spent unemployed. Yeah. Even me and a successful actor, most of my life I've been unemployed. So it's not really a great job <laughs> if you think about it in those terms. It's kind of a shitty job. And these Jason Biggs <laughs> intro to acting classes will be available on the website. Just click the link below. And kids, don't you uh, even be make, discouraged. You could have at least given me a master class <laughs> alongside Thomas Keller. Jason Biggs' master class on acting. Uh, all right, uh, last one. Uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? oh yeah oh man i think there's been a mistake and then check a list and then be like psych i just fucking wish you had to be like oh god is a sense of humor god that was dope that was dope you got me good you got me good that's like we're gonna have fun (laughs) we're gonna have fun here that's a great answer Uh, what if he was like um hey uh just between you and i (laughs) what kind of pie was it (laughs) i'll be like how do you not know bro (laughs) what the fuck wait what you created it, I thought. <laughs> Mind and blown. And then Ninja it, it Turtles, uh, Foot Clan smoke <laughs> blows up in front of them. <laughs> um, you're a beast. Uh, you're a fucking legend. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this. Oh, it's a pleasure. Hope this is a, a lot time. of fun, man. This is great. I yeah, love it. You're I, awesome. I got to be honest. I felt like it was going to be this uh, this fun, um, but uh, but you don't know. You know, you could have been a complete dud. You but, never know. You never know. But you're, uh, you're I, shit, Listen, man. for you, I brought my B game. I really did. <laughs> I really did. You deserve it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you're on the gram. 
Uh, yeah. your uh, Bigs Jason. Bigs Jason. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you post. You post the, a little enough to follow. My wife is the is very active. Okay. I try to. I I'm in and out. Fits and starts. But I'm there. I like to you know give a little content. I I like watching people. So I found you, bro. That's how I'm here. Awesome. Love it. God bless you. Thanks, pal. Um. All right. Well, I'll see you. Uh. Fuck. Part two. Part two. Tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Jason, random. I'm actually staying in New York uh, another day. But my day. hotel doesn't have any room. Yeah. Oh, man, you mentioned something about a futon. That was 20 years ago, man. Yeah, but, yeah, you but know. still, is it around? <laughs> is it in storage? Can I? Uh, Good night, everybody. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is, click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Oh, I don't know how to blink.